am so smart. I definitely remember to set up the game capture. Pop, there we go. There, I'm professional and smart. Okay, let's continue. Um, I cannot remember where we left off. I think I was just about to have to stay out overnight for lack of money. Sip coffee. Oh, did I afford the- oh, I afforded the room somehow. Incredible. The fan is spinning. It's friggin' late o'clock. Um... I think, yes, 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 we did the, um... The, the late the night conversation with... The and not particularly inviting. But it's yours. The sheets look awful. Awful. We did the late night conversation with Kim last time. That's where we were. We just finished the first day. <laughs> yeah, he's really made a fucking mess of that bed. Is that even a, a bed in the first place? Like, surely this room had a bed. Right? Not just a fold out couch? Ugh. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting. Let's get in. Let's the sheets that. feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Good night, everyone. I had fun streaming. No, I'm just sleeping in the game. I fooled you. And then sleep doesn't come. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. That's and then a painful sleep line. doesn't come. Maybe it's the bed's fault. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Okay, I suspect it's not going to be the bed's fault ultimately, but. This probably isn't helping it. It barely least. covers your toes, stretching over your soft I need belly. a blanket immediately. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. And also a shark in real life for companionship. Ah! Disco Elysium. Boku, hello! <laughs> no, 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 no. You stick with the, the Nova stream for now, and then when Nova finishes, come visit me. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colours. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. Uh, thank you, Inland Empire. It's a little better. Colours, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? I have a policy of not doing additional programming above my job on weeknights. And it's because, first of all, it's very easy to go in a state where your brain's still got something it's thinking about when you're in bed. And second of all, because I started getting programming dreams, which were absolutely unpleasant. Um, I, it, they're a bit hard to describe, but it's like trying to solve a maths problem while the logic part of your brain is offline. You, you really just... Yeah, no, it was... They were very abstract. Yeah, so that's why I don't program in the week anymore. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. That's very much engineering Boku. I may need to inquire further, but not immediately. And only if Boku desires. Who killed him? Something to do with. What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. <laughs> your breathing steadies. This a great <laughs> silence washes exactly over you me sleep. until your eyelids yeah, twitch yeah. in your sleep, and images, images start forming. Like, you need to solve a maths problem, but the maths part of your brain isn't working. So all you can do is grab numbers and try and fit them in, and they don't fit.
matter how many numbers you try. I'm glad that I get a halo whenever I right click. Okay, I need... I don't imagine so. No. The secret compartment is gone. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? Where was I born? I was born in Auckland Women's Hospital. And whenever I said this once in primary school and the kids were like, Wow, what are you, you're a woman? And at the time I thought I was cisgendered male. Inaccurately. Ah, well, hand wiggle on that. I, I tend to interpret myself as having chosen to change my gender rather than having been born the wrong gender, but... E e whatever. Advert. Okay. I'm gonna go look. Oh, back from the ad? Okay, cool. Um, yes, I was born in Auckland Women's Hospital and I got teased on it once and they said, What are you, a woman? And I was like, No, but my mum is. And then later on it turned out I was, in fact, a woman, so never mind. You're not kidding anyone, Harry. You don't remember she. Oh, wow, I didn't expect to be called me. out for just picking a random option. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs, between her legs and in her mouth? Good evening, everyone. Hello, Saffixes, my very good friend. We are playing Disco Elysium. Democracy has spoken, and I am all too happy to play this game. You know who I am. I'm the bad day, the one where you ask her, and then later in the streets, wandering. This is a bit loud. It's the worst day of all time, Harry dear, and it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. Should I turn this the game volume down a little bit, or...? Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me, do you remember the love of your life? That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and <laughs> We the immediately other on launched into the deep end here. Watching her go. I'm gonna go ahead and flag the stream as well. Let it all be dragged away from da, you. Da, 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 da. How do I do this? I'm gonna have to do it in the browser, aren't I? This is maybe a bit much. I think that the game is inherently tagged mature because... <laughs> because, yeah, of course it is. Ah, oh, Twitch don't open up to my own stream. Create a dashboard, there we go. No, maybe. Stream settings. Mature content. Skadoosh. Yeah, this counts as mature content, I think. Tell me. Where are your <laughs> That's friends? That's it. There we go. Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are your? You know, I've actually played this segment before and this is still getting to me. No, it's gone. Except for Three me. times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. Sip coffee for the sensation of something warm. 
You found Elysium. Everything. The pile and the easelers. Turn on heater as well, I on think. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. The Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. Okay. 4.6 billion? Sorry, what? That is a very low number. I don't know, I'm trying to remember what the global population was in the 70s. Which would be the appropriate area, area to compare Disco Elysium with, I think. Give or take. You're not coming back from shit, thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours, bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. Oh, that's an unpleasant visual metaphor. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. 3.7 billion in 1970? Oh my god, we've like doubled the global population since 1970? That's, that's crazy. I have white chocolate. And I will oh, gladly yes, use the boy. injection and of pure serotonin to make it through before. the roughness of this dream. Just think of the shit you saw! Here it comes too! So soon already! A silent alarm goes off in your head, like clockwork, barely let you sleep at all! Time to get those clothes on, Harry. This is... <laughs> this is more miserable than I remember. I managed to make it through without being affected the first time. Time to go to work in no, the wait, shit No, wait, no, this factory. line got me. Need to do something behind Kitsuragi's back. Sneak out after he is bed. I do have a recurring problem where I get sad on Sunday because I like... Good going, buddy. Really? Because you feel even worse this morning than you did last night. You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. I'm gonna keep lying and see if I can trick my limbic system. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. You're too weak to say no now. Waking up is the worst part. Maybe somewhere down the line you could decline. Why? Is Felician actually giving me good advice? Let's try and deny anyway. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. 
Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. We're going cold turkey, baby, on everything. We... <laughs> Do... <laughs> We've covered that the, detecti the detective's name is Harry, so I'm going to refer to the detective as Harry. Harry really needs to get his shit together. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. I'm gonna do great. I'm gonna do so good. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Minus 10 from tool not in hand. Okay. Let's try hold the chain cutters. I guess. Because apparently there's something we can do here. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's still in pretty it, dang low. Your face adorned with the expression. The faucet is quite terribly mangled. But you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains I fixed a sink, baby. shape. This is the step one stops. on the pulling my shit together path. Sip coffee. And bite chocolate. <laughs> I've been around, Boku. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. Stretch. Ah, oh, I don't... I feel like the bar has been set too high. <laughs> That's the best I can do. Ah, oh, it's so relaxing having the stream set to mature. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Electrochemistry. I think I've got some clothing for electrochemistry. I'm wearing my clothing of electrochemistry. Both the gloves and the pants. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Let's it's try and unparalyze our face. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. To some degree I've heard that this is a bad skill check to pass because it means that your portrait down here stops looking cheerful, <laughs> but I need to try. It's like something snaps in you, a nerve ending, a thought, I didn't expect a sadness. To pass. Bye, Chuck. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the layer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. Poggers, we fixed our face. <laughs> you look so sad. Is there anything else I can do with the mirror? Can I resume the expression? A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam. Good. He deserves to be sad. The fan is spinning. Good, we've got the Whirling and Rags theme. The best song in history. I can't wait to show Kim my new face. I wonder if he'll comment on me not doing the expression anymore. Kim's trying to, get to text us. Morning. 
Looks like we can get to work at once. The Union Master turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just Take like the manager said. No more coffee. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. Task complete. Find out who was in the union box. That's basically free experience for making it to day two. What do you mean rowdy? I mean ungovernable. <laughs> Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the ungovernable is an these men here. Anarchist expression used to refer to like Well, it's pretty literal. Adopting a culture that refuses to become part of you know, a larger system basically. But it's an interesting word to use to dis I mean it's accurate, but Hmm, hold on. My wing wings aren't animating correctly. What is going on? Why have they stopped? Okay. Men who drink beer for good. breakfast? There's talk of an armed wing of the union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. Reinforcements. That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. I'm gonna go ahead and just restart the, um, the face tracking real quick. It seems to have broken. Boop. This is a strange problem. I must fix it. Okay, I'm just going to restart VC face. Um, I haven't updated it in ages. Listen to the joyous sound of... Um, requesting admin permissions so it can... Nah, I haven't upgraded. When I have problems, it's normally because I've screwed up the lightning, but it just seemed to, to stop that time. Okay, now I need to reacquire the shark, which is absolutely urgent. And I'm back with the functional wingy. Which is, of course, absolutely essential. In fact, even the death of two detectives might Bye not chocolate. warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? <laughs> yeah, I care a lot about the winging animation. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. Yeah, Pog. But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? They're in no hurry to leave. Make my model they think they yes. own the place. Hold on, I need anyway, to I leave that choice to you. And Whatever you decide is fine by me. There we go. Uh, hold on. It should be on the arm sort of leaning forwards. But I can't look while I'm positioning it. There we go. That's good. <laughs> Make my model bigger? I could zoom in. Um, which key is it? There we go. Mm, controls. You can finally see the halos in my eyes. Seeing Nova... Oops, I can't remember how to control VC face. Okay, let's zoom out. Whoop. Bet. 
Is that wonky? That looks wonky. Okay, I'm just gonna reset it. <laughs> uh, beep. You saw nothing. Let's let's actually zoom in today, though. Let's get nice and close and comfy. There we go. Okay, let's talk to Guard some more. Can I help you? Got the 20 Real? Mm, no. Then why are you wasting my time and yours? Find money for rent and pay Guard. Barry not wearing pants? Disingenuous lie. I am, in fact, wearing pants. Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm gonna prove it. Jorts. There are jorts down there. They're just mostly covered by the, um... The thingy. The hoodie. I love wearing oversized hoodies. That is my greatest passion in life. This still looks wonky. Hold on. Does this look wonky to anyone else, or is it just me? I don't know, maybe I'm actually just physically wonky in real life. New law, angels wear jorts. Cannon. What we got, Lena? Just a moment. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. Yeah. And there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. Why is there not a single functional too. phone in this region of the town? That's kind of scary. To let the young woman who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. A little missing persons puzzle might just be the thing to take your mind off the hangover. Pog. Yes, um, I care a lot about... Um, how non-humans express their emotions with their anatomy. It's just a personal fascination. Humans are easy. This sounds like more like a side thing. I need to take care of my main thing, then I'll get back to this. <laughs> Girl, your missing husband is a side problem. That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. A cold breeze hisses through dense thickets of reeds. Something sweet in it, sunlight. A damp chill goes down your spine. When you look around, you're still in the whirling in rags. But you have more important things to worry about. I've been reading the Samuel Vines Discworld books. My good friend Anno tells me that Sam Vines, Sam Vimes has a very, very high skill in shivers. He does explicitly wear shoes that have worn so thin that he can feel the cobbles beneath them because he can tell where he is in the city by the cobbles. just in the first and second book. And apparently it gets an, a deeper connection as the series goes on. I've often said that it's the noir stat, but it very definitely represents um, it's quite literal. It, I mean, as the Windbreaker jacket decreases your sk shivers skill because you're not letting the, the wind that's blown through the city in. Hmm. 
<laughs> what was he Just on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained, but they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? The water lock. That was broken. Could this be it? Oh my. What happened to the water lock? Um, it was sabotaged so that we could do stuff. Well, whatever the cause, I'm thankful to both of you. You've spared me another sleepless night. Okay, I'm again going to reset the camera perspective because if it's this close, you can see my model shivering. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I should turn the steadying out. Uh, but, but, uh, but, uh, focus, Barry. You're streaming literally right now. You're welcome, ma'am. I've broken the seal on fiddling with VC face too much. I need to focus. I need to be professional. I hate to ask, but if your investigation Eat takes chocolate. you to the other side Life of the chocolate. coast, please do keep an eye out for my husband. And biff the chocolate plate. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. Mm. Yes, some left field scientific research is exactly what you need right now. Funk up that vanilla murder investigation. Conceptualization, why are you censoring yourself? You can say fuck. It's okay, I take the stream mature after. Um, Limbic System started talking about how he held a bottle in one hand and a dick in the other. And if you see him, let him know Lena is waiting for him here at the Whirling. He gets so tangled up in his work that he may not know the water lock's been repaired. And it's cold out there. Frigid task. Oh, oh you're such a dear. Task. Thank you, sweetie. I really love the look we've gone with. Oh, autosave. Hold on, I need to re-equip the... <laughs> Hello, shivers. A skill of eight in shivers. God, the bow collector, plus three shivers. Conceptualization streamed a lot of Minecraft, so they're fans of miners. That makes sense. Except water. I haven't streamed any Minecraft in a while. And I've been making a lot of adult jokes lately, so maybe I should. You know, maybe I should. Learning cat for endurance raised to four. That is endurance, the very, very specific skill, right? Yeah. Looks so sad. Wait, I have three skill points? I mean, of course I have three skill points. I have three skill points? Oh my god. Well, I suppose it's probably best to bank them until you need them. Either because you're going up a red against a red check that you really care about, or you need to redo a white check. Or I could unlock more thoughts for my thought brain. Hmm. Pretty dang tempting. Hmm. 
plus two authority against men, very good. Obocop. I'm just trying, we have, oh no, not too many more. Hmm, none of those seem particularly dire for immediate research. Yeah, hold on one second, let me get in there. I got, I got distracted, I was here because I was going to equip that instead of the friggin' bolt cutters. I'm looking at your tobacco bowl, and then I'm walking away. Wait, 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 hold on. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. Well, let's go for that crit. Nothing. Yeah. Just black tangles like the hair of an old woman. Okay, I should really memorize what I have in terms of clothing. Minus one perception. Yeah, that'd probably be a good start. Although I doubt it's probably enough to matter with it being a perception 15 check. Oh yeah, that's the guy that I woke up, isn't it? No, that's not the guy I woke up. That's the liberal. The liberal. Yeah, let's just walk out. Screw you, union workers who, um... Are super unambiguously... Wow, that's loud. Is there not a overall volume? I guess there isn't. Okay, I'll just turn it down on the stream a little bit. How's that? <laughs> yeah, let's go back to trying to... Oh, it's the shadow of that guy over there. Wow, the shadows are long in the morning. I mean, yes, of course, but... Um, I don't think I talked to this guy previous stream. Um, I don't think talking with him goes anywhere, but I should probably do it just so you get the impression. Bastards! We have a right to work! Yeah, he's a scab. Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. Yes. Ha! <laughs> Couldn't handle us. Cause gives the workers strength, gives them power. We have a right to work! Yeah, this guy talks in circles very deliberately um, because he's not actually pro union. He's been sent here by the company to um, agitate people against the union going on strike. Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. I have questions. Maybe you should ask them the questions. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. So do we, Scott. Okay, I do want to get into the harbor as well. Have fun. <laughs> Union shits are on full strike. Don't think they're going to let you through. Trying to meet their fat boss. You know, it's just. I know nothing about a murder. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. 
They'd do anything to stay alive. Yeah, most people would. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. We should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Go fuck yourself. We are not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. Let us work! Yeah, it's mostly just background lore. He seems sympathetic if you know nothing. But, even though the Union isn't sympathetic, neither is he. Okay, we already had a look at that. <coughs> Pardon. <coughs> ah, many sneezes. Um, we were looking for the pale driver. In fact, we might still have that task available. Alright, call Alice back in a day. That's now. Run. Run. Thank you for the blessings. Salut. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? You got anything on the serial number? Yes. The armor was produced by Fairweather in their facilities in Betancourt, sur la clé in 42. It was part of a special order for Corps de Pharmacy, a security firm contracted to protect the interests of Iranian pharmaceutical companies in the Seminine conflict. Okay, I'm really glad I've got a transcript, because otherwise I'd need to get her to repeat that. So, it seems the armor went to Seminine. That's where the paper trail ends, though. Even the film has proven difficult to track. Corps de Pharmacy has been renamed several times over in the years since the armor was issued. The most recently registered film that the ICP has been able to connect to the CDP is a military contractor called Trinel. And the one before it was down when. I think they might be the same contractor. A suit of armor like this would have been manufactured with a particular person's physique in mind. You should ask for whom this suit was fitted. Yes, but the ICP tends to be reluctant to sell private sector records. I could try to talk them into it, though. Sure. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully I will have more information for you then. Great. Call back again tomorrow. <laughs> Not yet, but I was able to convince the database people to sell private sector information. They promised to get back to me by tomorrow morning. Do you have any other questions? 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a... I don't know why it's decided that I should have a halo, but I'm okay with it. Um, did I talk to the balcony guy? Yes, I did. We had a big conversation. I did not talk to Letterhead, which I probably should just for the stream content. Uh, let's go up to call, call me Manana. Hola, wandering man. How can I help you? Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. I have no idea That's what okay. I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing either. I don't even know what day it is. Don't tell me. It's a better day that way. I envy this man. I don't know, sometimes when I'm like going to work in the mornings, I'll see people chilling in a cafe, not rushing on like a Monday morning. And I'm like, people who have... I see these people I'm like I need to be exactly where they are I need to have the the energy and money to just go out for breakfast on a Monday morning but also the time oh boy we got measure head groupies nobody betrays your degeneracy content warning for this conversation 
esoteric racism. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Al Ghul. His face contorts in disgust, as if he were smelling a rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Yes. Al Ghul. He means alcohol. Correct. My small skull self. Yeah, there's gonna be phrenology. Al Ghul is an ancient Ilmaran poison. A parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you. For humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Intentionally fermented drinks have existed for 10,000 years. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Holam and Hul have fed your people. No one believing in it, race loser. I don't think that's quite how history works. Why don't you have another drink? Your features are not yet congenitally deformed. Enough. Oh wow, that was a bit, a bit much. Oh yeah, measure head. It's not good. <laughs> Cam, I, I need you to have my back here. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach, got drunk and drowned. <laughs> Perception too. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplog Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich Race. Am Sandwich is Race. Waning. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? Yeah, let's point at the lorryman. Look at my chronology. I am the pinnacle of my Apollo group. The pink blob is a bad example, even of yours. It saddens me. You were once a noble and powerful race. So, Measurehead is very unique in that... Well, yeah, it's pretty exact here. He goes all in on the racial ideology. He goes all in on white supremacy in the past tense. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles Holy and shit. aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. Girl. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. Oh, that it one. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbor. This man is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the harbor. Shall we try and push him out of the way? Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting I can the beat other him up. races to a great world war. 
Let's try and beat him up. Bring your troops to the Simenan Islands and to Boogie Street, and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Wool, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the odes to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Okay, good. You're back just in time to catch Measurehead being homophobic at me. There may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Measurehead's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Well, not as such. What you do with the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure. Or accept them and become an advanced racist. Oh, uh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma. Race enigma. Much deeper than that. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Something your race, nivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the communism, op communism option here. <laughs> Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race descent. Communism Everywhere is responsible for individualism. Fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted diseases, above all, Rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Should I say disco? Rock and roll music? Disco or... Yeah, it's gotta be disco. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. God. I don't really know who the Simonies are. I've recently experienced head trauma. I can see that. The Simonies are the South Island race. Aplogum A for A. The rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Isn't Pericarnassus a place in actual Greek? We are Greek, the future. Greece. That is all you need to know. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fontaine waiting on immaculate conception from the pay. So you did not come from the islands? No. I have heard about it on the radio. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, the radio is such a pure form of media. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Revachon. The city is central to the Simony strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. 
You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. And never getting that dead body down from the tree. Let's try and bluff this. Ask what kind of races there are first. Classification is called to this stuff. Do you? This is for the thing. The lieutenant looks toward the harbor's electronic door, and then to you. He lets out an audible sigh. You are obviously a liberal, sailor. I said a fucking communist earlier. I can see it from your love of micro technology and your sartorial choices. I don't think Do not Du Bois owns a single piece of micro technology. You oh, he means Kim. There are three categories of race. Tipa, the heroic races. Tibe, the servile races and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need an occasional? Okay, I'm really sorry, but this is actually a fairly good primer as to the diff as to at least listing the different cultures of this world. Those are the Simonese, Aruopajit, and the Occidentals, excluding the Mao, of course. The Mound are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreeding. <laughs> Mound? I am actually trying drawing a blank as to what that could be an analogy for. A receding genetic pool has led the Mound on comprehensible street parades in bound cities like Stats Canal and Le Defoe, wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. Are oh, they Dutch? Oh, wait, the Dutch aren't lactose intolerant, the Dutch love cheese. You know them by the names of their nation states. The Oranese, the Gotwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Mao. Okay, so they're German and Dutch. Mahun is a derogative term for first world people of Gottwaldian descent. They do not all have eczema. Also, people of Katla, like the Sudu and the Huhu, are much more lactose intolerant. I really like Encyclopedia just chipping in with, hey, this guy's full of shit. In some municipalities of Orenye, people do wear shoes made of wood to street parades. Green, orange, and even yellow tassels have also been seen on hats. Ah, oh, he was right about the clocks and hats. The mound are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Oh boy. Colorful tassels are, let's be honest, not a good sartorial choice for this century. You might want to avoid wooden clogs too. The Vesper Tines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina, the ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea, the Suren of Sur la Clé, and even the North Königsteiners, all have Tipa race propensity. So, uh, North Konigstein is probably um, Scandi, in particular Denmark. Roughly. And Vespertines? Uh, drawing a direct analogy to real world geography isn't. is intentionally not an exact science, but. Vespertines? Oh, Italians. Vesper being <laughs> Italian for wasp. And Messinians? Vesper and Messinia. Ancient meteor meteorans of Meteo. 
by the Golden Sea. Pro probably Greek or Roman. The Serenes of Sir Le Clef. French, maybe? The other large Mundial Civilization, the Mesk, are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem. Oh, violent and expansionist is the the um he's being incredibly fucking racist to Chinese here. Overproduction of sebum. Sebum is oh, no. He's being incredibly rain. fucking racist to them listen to El Central Americans. A toxic minced meat based food. Which in turn only produces more sebum. Mm, I'm getting increasingly uncomfortable with this, I might actually act As proven by the Moun and the Mask, Occidental Tip A is in retro. The Seminese and the Aryopagite are on the ascent. The opposite of retrograde is prograde. Yeah, yeah. Shockingly, the... The racist doesn't have a totally accurate view of... Um... Mexicans and Central Americans. The Areopagites are sleek, long headed. The Simonese are powerful, mesomorphic. Mesomorphic, that's not a word I've heard in a long time. Unchanged since the super isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. He falls silent. Contemplating the beauty and mystery. Hi, Nova. Yo, Nova Raid with the meowing. We are talking to a racist in Disco Elysium. I'm thinking I might cut this conversation short because it's getting increasingly uncomfortable as it goes on. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. We are playing Disco Elysium, which is... Chill times. I advise you to brace your ears for the filth that's going to fall from this guy's mouth. It's fascinating because um, <laughs> there is a mature streamer now. Yes, I set this stream to mature because Disco Elysium was not pulling its punches. Um, yeah, this guy's interesting because he's because Disco Elysium takes place in a very alternate universe, and in that alternate universe, he's all in on. Um, racism but he thinks that um, white people used to be the master race but now the Seminese are taking the throne of master race the latter is perfected and adapting together they form the Simeno Areopagite or Simeopagite super race that is all there are no more tip in the world. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Nature was not capable of more. Oh, shut up, Inland Empire. Don't agree with him. tip Bay are the unheroic races. Amorphous non So now this is going to get bad before it gets better. The and the Vacholier, they are mud color. The Koi colors of Grad, Yuko, Jimson. Chest et al. are what you would call white officer in a suspect description. Yes, to an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a hand sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. We're cutting him off a bit. a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the grad people have undergone for drinking al rule and smoking the degenerate tobacco herb and for eating potato. Christ. The Koiko. I love potatoes. micro nationalities of grad. Wouldn't he be one for ethnostates? Yeah. 
<laughs> they are microscopic. The Seminole Apajit Super State will cover the entire remaining planetary crust uninterrupted. From Holy Seminine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla. Potatoes are great. They still give out something other than what this guy's saying. Because <laughs> we had stuck in this conversation for Elected by the two. Not the base in our spoilage called Demos. The Vasholians, halfway between Tipa and the Racial called Ron. Two makes to know why. Is it 82,000 years that we've been recording history? You have very little idea of what is happening. But that seems a little off. Go away, stupid political thoughts. I'm pretty sure history hasn't the lasted that The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin Did you hear a little revolution? Wake up, my chest. I'm uncritically in favor of the communist revolution that went horribly here, yeah. The revolution came to Ravachol from Graal, in Zaraz, in the potato car. It is literally an illness. Literally. A prion disease that leaves the parieta and frontal lobe ridden with holes. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. Okay, we're gonna skip through this next section because... We've just... D he was just talking about races that he puts under category B. And now we're going through category C to F, so, um... Tips the F are a museum of failed chimeric Oh good, there is a straight up a skip for this option. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest uh, in them I'm grimacing. worries me. It would be cruel to entertain ourselves with their deformity. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. We will see. That's t a nice way of saying no. Access to the Union is important for our investigation. But there may be another way, without becoming a race theoretician. Yeah, I... don't want to... <laughs> Lost, though. Buckled away at the last gate. This is why your upload group will never rise from the ashes. Now... I need to luxuriate in the private company of my bay. Leave me. <laughs> I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tibere Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease? We still need to get into the harbor. We need help with the tree situation. There must be another way. Actually, you know what, let's go for it. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. Oops. You have really let huh. yourself go. That's what I get for opening a conversation mid-save. Yeah, no, let's try and punch him. How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. Ow. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Okay, the thing is that Harry is a degenerate alcoholic, so I can say this without too much shame. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. Uh Ken wants to talk. I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians, because that won't get us anywhere. What? 
I'm not even sure the one bullet my chamber holds would even prick that. Oh, Kim's pissed off at me for punching them. But I was fighting bad, unsavory ideologies. I'm a hero. There must be some other way. Let's go see the yard again. It faces the other end of the harbor. We're done with Measure Head here. Let's think of something else. Yeah, so that was Measure Head, and on the one hand, you really do need to know who Measure Head is. Because, good god, is he a lot. But on the other hand, oh my god. Ah, uh, I lost some brain cells to that conversation. <sighs> Paint the wall, run the number on the victim's armor, close the water lock on Wednesday, find Bruce and drink it. No, get the body down, that's not happening. <sighs> find out who's the lady driver and where's her lorry. Well, it's not. Um, her, unfortunately. We have talked to her at length. To which the answer was no, not relevant. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island. That's a real fucking monument. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings. The Squanderer, Richard, the greatest son of the Philip Philippian II, kings? The opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. So, there is um, an English king by the name of Ethelred, whose historical title is The Unready. <laughs> and um, the thing is that that's aged poorly, because unready at the time meant poorly advised, but it now just sounds like poorly prepared. And in terms of people who have... Um, unfortunate titles. William the Conqueror is, of course, also known as William the Bastard, on account of the part where he was born out of wedlock. Philippe IV the Insane, Philippe III the Squanderer, the greatest of kings, son of Philippe II the Opulent. Good god, they all their titles suck. No wonder Rivershot isn't a monarchy anymore. <laughs> Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. I need to turn my heater up. It is too cold in here. There we go. Well, he blew through the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Richard. Acquire snack. Yes, go get a potato. Just crunch into it. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. How did he blow the entire budget? Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable Potato wealth, jump. Krugerrands, yes. bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. Chalices? He called it the Sol Aura. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon, instead of a bed like a normal person. <laughs> okay, it took me a second to realize that these are ideology answers. I'd like to sleep on gold. Hus the style is liberal. The king is the king and he can do anything as a monarchist. Wait, really? There's no way that... That's true, is unaligned and a deplorable fast. No wonder everything went to shit, is very sadly communist. I sleep on golden feathers every night, I just sleep on my own wings. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. 
I don't even want to know. Philip III's ludicrous bronze likeness looks defiantly up into the sky. So, there's a little bit more lore about the statue, obviously. And I'm a little surprised that Encyclopedia isn't giving us it. Um, but I'll just recite it anyway. Very obviously, the statue was blown up. And then it was re the parts were reassembled by artists in its current form to represent the tortured history of Revishol. It's intentionally like this. It's kind of effective in that way, but it's also a huge friggin' eyesore, because look at this mess. Okay, let's go talk to the dang union, I guess. Unless we have anything else in our to-do list. Lady Driver, 20 real, find smokes and smoke them. Nope, not doing any drug stuff. Track down your badge, who put the clothes on the track? <laughs> ah. That also needs to, us to find the pale driver. Victim's tattoos. Ask around about the tattoos possible meaning. Thank you for the head paps. Explore the whirling secret passage. Find a way into the secret passage. Bury yours? Hmm. We could talk to Joyce about lore. Buy the pants from Kuno. Get all the armor pieces. Oh, I covet. I covet so bad. Get the boots. And track down your gun. Okay, cool. Yeah, we should really just go talk to the Union boys. The Temptate... I might go make myself a cup of tea real quick. <sighs> I require a warm drink. I will leave you. With <laughs> the fantastic vision. Okay, you know what? Actually, before I. Plus one suggestion, minus one half light, physical instrument, electrochemistry. We don't want the minus one Savoy fear. No pants better than those pants. Um, probably don't need conceptualization for this. Plus one composure, minus one Savoy fear. We need more clothes. Why am I so cold? Um, my uh, basically, I let my room get cold, and it takes a while for my heater to to warm it up again. Minus one perception and plus one inland empire. Prob. Mm, maybe we should take the glasses off. Oh my God! Look at his face. He's so sad under the glasses. Get comfy socks. I'm wearing socks. I'm wearing socks. I got some socks off the rack downstairs this morning and I put them on and I've worn them all day. And I'm wearing slippers over them as well. Titus, you're told to keep a low profile. Okay, I'll leave you with... Okay, jacket is plus one suggestion, minus one half light. Um, Let's go instead with the spread of core. This is the... You may not like it, but this is peak performance. Minus two authority. We probably actually don't want that. Um, do any of these have any stats? No. Okay, we'll just drop off the trash bag because that way we look more poggers. I'll be back in a couple of minutes with tea.
I am back with T. Thank you for showing for me, Boku, where I am far too sh shy. I almost said shy and sad and said shad. A combination of vowels that I cannot believe is not actually a word. Ah, <sighs> let me catch my breath from running back up the stairs. I have the tea. Uh, let's talk to the to the lady first. Let me handle this. You seem a little different today. Less shad. <laughs> it's a fish. Okay, I can believe this. You are far from home, Lieutenant. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. You're right, Lieutenant. She did seem friendlier sitting on that corner. Not a muscle moves in her face, but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy, who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. Oh my god. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Okay, you know that's not the fucking case. Just dock workers? Do dock workers spy on the police? We let you off easy, miss. Don't think it will happen again. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask. Or get back to your commanders. The privatization is not unlawful. It's cool and funny. Maybe you're just not historic individuals. <laughs> you couldn't make it through that. Um, I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. What are the Union's plans? Look, a comedian. Do your job. Ask your questions. Then get out of Martinez. Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. <laughs> mysterious. Utterly mysterious. Hmm. What are we going to do to you? <laughs> the Union isn't going to do anything to you. It is not a crime syndicate. It is a labor organization. Uh -huh. Goddamn right it is. If anything, it is the RCM who do things to people. But we digress. Okay, what is your role? Obviously, in I'm a lawyer. A legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. I would urge you to consider what you say to my clients. Yeah, so she's a lawyer. And also, she was spying on us. Um... I'm, mm, I'm trying to remember what c I covered in this playthrough and what I covered in the previous playthrough. I think it has come up that the Revishal Citizens Militia is not a traditional poli- the RCM, which we work for, is not the traditional <laughs> police force as we know it in our world. Which is very good, because it somewhat alleviates all the ACAB stuff. But, while they do enforce laws, they are basically a ground-up community policing organization and that it was oh Jesus Christ um, we need to have some law enforcement and this um, legal cluster frig that being a treaty city has put us into this is where you say your bit a broad-shouldered man points at you with a beer can let me look at it um, Tuesday. Oh, they're sorted by day. Oh god, all that's just from Monday. Detective. Yeah. 
He's leaving it to you. Oh, this is about him. A real looker, that one. I just remembered how much I hated this man. You're sure taking your time, waiting for him to get ripe and pretty for you, huh? Oh, he was a real pretty boy by now. Real hot stuff. Letting out that pretty boy smell. Mmm, pretty boy smell. I love the way pretty boys smell. Time to go to work in the shit factory! Oh, Jesus Christ. That's nightmarish. Easy, boys. These janitors have a hell of a job cut out for them. I mean, I wouldn't go in there for a million. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. Okay, it's that No, no, no. I see her. You got business with my boys. You got business with me. He understood what you were doing. Take an inventory of them. Yeah! You fuck with the Hardy boys, you fuck with Titus Hardy! Relax, Dennis. No one is fucking you yet. Yeah, Dennis, calm down. No one's fucking you, you stupid fuck. <laughs> Let Dennis enjoy his fucking, man. We don't mind. Yeah, <laughs> you're not even being fucked, Dennis. Easy, fellas. We got company. Let's see what brings the cop around. Too late. You already scanned the room. You got a pretty good picture. A picture of what? Of the actor's hair. You could take another look at the tracks in the mud on the crime scene. Compare it to these guys. Bye-bye. I'm gonna take off now. Let's go do exactly that. I think I'll call that a productive morning. Oh, is it raining outside already? <clears throat> um, suggestion, Half-Life Composer, Sure Shivers, Perception, Inland Empire, Separate Fear. Let's just put on some pants for the sake of decency. <laughs> Let's put on the blue jacket again because it's a look. Actually, under tools, we have the Ledger of Failure and Hatred. Possibly useful for this. We're not going to need authority to stare at some um, boot prints on the ground. Hi there, Kuno. There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 pairs have walked here. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. Where else have we seen a gang of men in work boots? One, That's two, right. The Hardy Boys in the mess hall of Welling and Three, Rings. four, five, six, seven, eight. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Just like Titus was wearing in his booth, this is the big dick. Titus Hardy. The one with the ball cap on his head. <laughs> Interesting. Is it? They didn't even bother to change boots. Putting them on the scene is easy. Maybe even too easy. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 44. Either the blonde muscular guy, Glenn, or the young guy with a plectrum around his neck. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes, number 43. The inked banger, perhaps. Four, standard work boot, number 45 or 46. Theo, the old smoker. You think you even see a tiny fleck of cigarette ash inside the print. Five, another standard work boot, reinforced toes, number 44. Same as before, either the musician, Eugene, or the muscle-bound blonde, Glenn. I bought a pair of Docs, Doc Martens, not too long ago. That with um, stitched roses on the side. They're absolutely beautiful, and it's nice to have some <coughs> boots that I could, you know, wear to a high-class party, and then also wear on a construction site. Um, 
The only thing is that they are hell to break in. I have worn through my heels several times. Six. Yes, Lights I have shown you them. Same make of boot, but number forty-one. Sip tea. Small like a rat. Shanky. Oh, that tea has the spot. It's too hot to sip too much. Better late than never, detective. The whole world is dark, and the tracks burn in it with strange beauty. Seven. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number forty-six. The imprints are twice as deep as the others. The weight exceeds 200 kilograms. Fat Angus. Carrying something? Eight. Another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the Didn't get an ad. Good. The right sole is smoother, more worn. Curious. A missing eighth Hardy Boy. Seven sets of tracks, right? The Hardy Boys were here. That's all? Interesting. Then one of them seems to be missing. Anything else out yes. of the ordinary? Note to self. This would be a good question to ask Titus. Where's the eighth man? Two hundred. This could be the combined weight of two people. One carrying the other who's tied up. Let's say a heavily built worker carrying a similarly built armored man. Maybe it was a fat hardy boy, the one sitting in the middle. He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. So previously, I actually came to these footprints before um, talking to the union boys in the booth. And instead I went up to the union boys and said, Hey, you guys happen to match the footprints out back exactly. Did you do it? And Titus said, Yeah, we did it. Now, you've got to figure out which one of us did it. We're pretending that we, we're not going to let you know which one of us did it and which one of us in, is innocent so you don't know who to arrest. And the insight of exactly how the boots line up to the people was a little bit more hard to follow. Possibly, yes. But why? Yes, they could have used a makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. You have a point there. Anyway, it's something to consider. What else can you see? Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the missing Hardy Boy. Wonder who he is. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it. We are not looking I'm for not drum. calling him stupid, even if he was backing up the Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. Interesting. If only I had come up with that idea. Okay, no, I'm just gonna nod thoughtfully. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam. See whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's point I'm out. I'm guessing that's the skinny hardy boy. The one with his front teeth missing. I don't know if I want to say this because I get the impression that Kim's being... You know what, let's say it anyway. Yes, well, he did look a bit like a rat. You're right. Do you think those prints belong to him? Yes. I could still be wrong, but I'm probably not. We know exactly how old the tracks are. They happened at the same time as the body. It's not really that much of a mystery. Can we get anything from this gate? I imagine not. The tracks are as they have ever been. A bit more worn, perhaps. Fortunately, the street sweeper still hasn't noticed their presence. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Five experience for that? Sure, why not? Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. Sip tea. Ah. 
hello Looks again. Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Stretch. Okay. <laughs> there we go. How was that? I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, Nova. But the problem is that this is a very funny problem. <laughs> okay. Um, where's the eighth boy? What are you talking about, Madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Except he. He sizes you up. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. I reflexively flipped him off in real life when he said that. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... She? So there's an eighth Hardy and it's a Hardy girl? Who wow, might Wow, the be? fact that I... Elizabeth? The gardener? <laughs> no, it's not going to be the lawyer. And the fact that I dressed for reaction speed actually paid off. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? Yeah, who is she? It has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so too. So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boy's matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And you're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. Did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Maybe it's because it's our fucking job. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why are your boot prints all over the scene? We all got a beer. We wore them the night we took the pretty there boy we go. back and hung him by the neck. Yeah, we did this together, all of us, until he was dead. That's why our prints are all over the scene. Break the fourth wall, Harry. Game over. We got no, the killer. No, you don't. What you have is seven honest men who thought it forthcoming to tell you what happened. So that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. The diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. Who called the shots? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You Except can't he. arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. <laughs> Who do you fucking think does? <laughs> the one who's missing the big dick. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's Titus. That's right, asshole. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. Ain't that so, fellas? <laughs> I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. No. You did not get an answer. Titus does administrative work. He pushes paper, fills out forms, the others can't read. But on that night, they all acted as one man. Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out of line in my town. Um, what is a funny problem? The problem is that Nova, in her stream earlier, realized that she sounds very happy when she stretches. I Too am. happy. He stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over it. ex oranese Special Forces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly that clip. I'm glad that you saw it. A live grenade, right here in our bar. 
I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hired Merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm Arnie's goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all! Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some Arnie's paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either, but he fucking did, right there. Like some kind of animal. Sire, the tale is true. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, drama. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Workers threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape to harassment to threats of violence. Why the strange de escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming. Again, this game has every content warning. Yeah. He said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah. This girl's on the mic. A beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake. The fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt. Why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle doesn't even fall down aren't you fucking listening my man is talking to you he took care of it they got the girl out before anything else could happen yeah me and eugene got her out aren't you fucking listening there's something odd here seems like they don't want to talk about that rape titus mentioned why not this is a serious allegation make them talk about it no, you're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. Maybe you wrap it up instead? Why don't I just... Uh, well, I mean, the answer to that is a pretty straight line of... Titus is a big fella and he's got six friends with him. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent -a cop is gonna hear from us real law officials you're lucky you didn't get a beaten let's roll on it hold on 16 yeah oh I'm holding the clipboard of really really bad authority we can try and take that off and see if that improves odds it probably won't yeah let's remove and see if we've got any clothes that give us authority or remove authority. Nah. It's Looks all like just the clipboard. The circus left town, but the clowns are still here. <laughs> Any odds? Nope. Still exactly the same. 
Yeah, I've got an authority of 2 and a crit is 12. <laughs> so, even if I crit, I'm only winning because I crit, not because I am actually over the score. Let's go! Establish authority. Yes. Authority. Fever's thoughts race through Godly your Godly failure. Failure. Kim, I need your cat. I'm the only thing keeping this town from going to hell, and you're not and helping. what exactly is it you've been doing that's so goddamn Sip special? Tea. Shitting yourself in front of us. Going around, harassing kids on the street. Kids who've done nothing wrong. All the while talking racist shit. Don't think we aren't watching fascia. People here trust us. We're getting complaints. <laughs> fascia. That's short for fascist. <laughs> I haven't said anything racist. I don't even have a gun. I haven't harassed any kids. I'm not shitting myself. <laughs> Let's go through all of these in order. Oh, we don't, maybe don't want to. You've you been calling people Kip left and right, inciting race violence in my town. Kali said they've been trying to set up a race rally, whatever the fuck that means. Trying to get the kips out of Revishaw before the economy goes to shit. I'm not a racist, just look at my butt. He's not racist, and there is no really. There is no Carly either. It's a joke. Let's move on, okay? What's happened? You got your ass handed to you. Always go with the gun. <laughs> How are you going to get out of this now? That's a fucking terrible piece of advice authority. <laughs> I'm gonna go and get some uh, morale juice, I think. No matter how much it costs, because I'm on the verge of morale death. That hurt. To the freak. I never got that raincoat. Oh well. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Okay. I need a magnesium, yeah. please. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Thank you. At least that was only 90 cents. That's not too bad. Um, shall we go and do the reality lowdown? We're kind of starting to run a bit dry on leads. I don't know, we're already on our tasks for Tuesday. Prove authority, find morale, which is going to have to wait till Wednesday. Look for a witness, get help from the union boss or the company rep, tie them to any other crimes. Welcome to Revashaw. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sleep well, Nova. Thank you for the raid. It is greatly appreciated. I always appreciate your company. Um, <laughs> is this going to go anywhere? Box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce yeah, Center. Sleep well. East Delta Commerce Center. This must be the name of the doomed commercial area. Main Hall, Building B, Whirling and Rags. Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. They don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. Main hall, building B, East Delta Pinball, entrance from building... Wait. Silence. No one answers your call. Does that imply that the mysterious door that's been shut forever leads to a pinball? 
wait, no, it's the pinball thing that I crashed into early on. I get the impression the rest of those are going nowhere as well. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Me? No one. I'm just the working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working class woman, why isn't she working? Not all the working? time. Right now I'm browsing books. Even a working class woman Except needs he. something to read. I'm a policeman. You can tell from my no I pants. Know you are. Everyone can see that. Direct angles. Mm hmm What with? Maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? You're not a drug dealer, are you? Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is, you don't really know where your husband is. Yes, but I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. No. Maybe you're right. Maybe he of isn't. Of course he's not. It's not like he's a pocket watch. I wouldn't just lose him. Are you sure? Haven't I stirred some, like, doubt in your heart? It's got to be something else then. Why else would you be asking her? If it wasn't. Maybe your cockatoo is missing? I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree. But cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge him in this. I don't even have a cockatoo. And guess what? It's a trap. Never ever say what. Always listen to, to your brain. Great. Just one more question. What did you mean when you said I was a cockatoo? Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain? <laughs> or you <laughs> bird? Uh, I can't believe this actually led to a task. Wonderful. The store is open. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. Good. I have harassed her into giving me a quest, whether she likes it or not. <sighs> Patience. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to Crime, Romance, Gave smart and parenting advice, ripped people. open the curtains. I'm looking for a book about, a book cockatoos. about cockatoos. There should be one upstairs, right next to the shelf of biographies. Farewell, book peddler. Aha. A sulfur crested cockatoo sits on the cover, its beak slightly open. It looks as if the bird is calling out the book title. From A to Zurich, a guide to a well behaved cockatoo. Turns out that there are so many different cockatoo species, and they all have behavioral problems. Shocking. You don't have behavioral problems. That's garbage. You're cool. It's a must-have if you own a cockatoo. I've heard they're quite capricious. Um, probably not a good idea to do the steel check when Kim is standing right next to me. Oh, a nature enthusiast. Good choice. I knew it was a good idea to keep that around. Let's read the book. I'm getting so... Wrong task. Find your heraldic bird. Yes. Read the damn book. is a parrot with an erectile crest. Septi. Found on the Seminine Islands and in southern Fas a la Mer. Known for their intelligence and general precociousness, I identify a lot with parrots. Birds in aviculture. However, they often exhibit various behavioral issues. This book talks about mm. the delicate nature of twos, as well as introducing some of the most popular species among the bird enthusiasts. The funeral cockatoo, the major majestic cockatoo, and the most common 
Bang bang cockatoo. It's colorfully illustrated. Bang bang cockatoo. Oh, I hope the majestic cockatoo is my spirit Perhaps animal. The most impressive of all the species, the endangered major majestic cockatoo, is often described as the most flamboyant bird. The flamboyant in the bird in the its jungle. Its pink-colored wings and flowing crest embellish its proud and bumptious nature. Bumptious. In the words of poet explorer Sir James Fournier, few birds more enliven the monotonous hues of the verdant forest than this big, bold, and beautiful species. Despite its banging name, the Bang Bang Cockatoo is actually the shyest of the species, common in almost all Seminese forests, as well as zoos and homes all over the world. Its plumage is mainly grey and white. The Seminese name Bang Bang is thought to be of onomatopoeic origins. We have a lot of onomatopoeic origins for bird names here in New Zealand. Kiwi, Tui, I'm going to assume Moa. Um, the list goes on, quite frankly. This is a yellow-tailed black cockatoo. Its specific name, Sitarchus venereus, relates to its dark and somber plumage. This bird looks as if dressed for a funeral, 24-7. There is something indisputably ominous about it. Yes. But all those cockatoo species are so different. Which one are you? What if I'm just a fuck up to? I am the majestic cockatoo. You're right. Your majesty embodied. This big, beautiful bird belongs on your heraldry. Alright, what problems do these birds have? Where to even begin? All cockatoos are known for their needy natures requiring attention for at least two full hours a day. They love to talk, and have been described as lovable clowns who just don't know how to wrap up. Pet owners also report moodiness, loudness, and hostility as recurring issues. If left unsatisfied, cockatoos may scream non-stop, pluck their feathers, or become aggressive. It is not recommended to get a cockatoo if you're not able to cook them food every day and give them the full care that they need. These birds will never understand that you have a life of your own. You're right. Cockatoos are magnificent creatures. They love to perform, cuddle and show off, and will even scream for fun, often as loud as up to 135 decibels. Not great for the neighbors. Performing, yes, birdie. <laughs> yes, birdie. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights, and they sold shit. I am a superstar. Yeah, you have. You're a big dick cop. Dick Mullen. Salam Rocky Bae. Badass on the edge disco cop. Time to recede into a ludicrous fantasy world. Time to recede. Here we into go. Ludicrous. Camera. Lights. Wait, no, what's that about a ludicrous yeah, fantasy world? You know. Beneath it is just heartbreak. A pulmonary tract infection. Atherosclerotic disease. This is where you say action and reconceptualize all that. Reinvent it as the world's first celebrity police officer. No, that's actually pretty good. This is the beginning of your legend. Fuck it. Action. With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you, and you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. This is how it feels to be a Twitch streamer and especially a VTuber. Um, can I get into that door with or without Placence's permission? What skill would I need to leave up? A heavy door with a missing handle stands pain before threshold. you, covered in... <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have no pla pain threshold.
Some kind of superstar. A metaphorical superstar. You bring that rock and roll authenticity and passion into a line of work where people don't expect or want to see it. Where some would say it doesn't belong to <laughs> law enforcement. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its good. I'm not insulting the mailbox. There's a guy here. I have yet to replace the ball. <clears throat> Let's take a quick look at our map just for the white checks that we. We've got a couple of checks with Joyce. We have one at the Hanged Man with the Inland Empire. And that appears to mostly be at this map. This one does not. Wait, there's an interfacing check on the book? You don't mean there's an interfacing check to steal the book, do you? A cockatoo. This book talks about the delicate nature of twos, as well as introducing... I think that that's a bag. <laughs> Saffron Picker, welcome to Revshaw. Wow, being significantly less subtle. <clears throat> Where, what were we thinking? There's something on my mind. Um, oh, Inland Empire check on the corpse. Maybe I can take that to Titus and shake him up a bit. Um, hold on, let's just double check that we're dressed for Inland Empire as much as possible. Poggers. Hydrate. Yeah, I got my water right here. I'm genuinely interested in The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and white boots. His skin is oh, he looks worse with today. veins and blotched by lividity. I'm gone. Into the wild pile yonder. In the past. Way out in the west. Pardon? The, the cost of eating sausages for dinner. Sausage flavored burps that taste delicious. I'm a joke. Look at me. There is nothing funny about jokes either. A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Go ahead, Hobo. What do you mean? It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Imagination. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Because you're a cop -roony. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, Copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting up be now. Because you have loved at me and Brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? This is the honest and correct answer. 
You're a lying sack of shit, Coppo. You're doing this because there is nothing else to do. Everything else is over. It's just me now. It's just me now. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Moller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. You sure I got out of that one? <laughs> God believe me. Enough. Come back later, Corpo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also see me in your dreams. Can't help but notice that that line didn't match up with the text at all. Let's leave the dead corpse that I'm imagining talking to me. Just a bit. Um, there are some legitimate problems because the... Um, I believe that the dub was only in the um, definitive edition of the game, and before that it was in fact predominantly text, but I think that that one might have been intentional. <laughs> um, I will be back in just a minute, I need to get ready for bed and stuff, I will not be too long, I leave you to the beauty of Martinez.
And I'm back. Thank you again for the patience. That is the last time that we'll need to stand up. Um, where were we? Um, I think our current tasks were basically just, um, talk to Joyce. We have, um, as pretty to call legendary and conceptualization impossible. Let's go slam those white checks, baby. Hello, book. Hold on, I should have my halo up while I'm doing this. This is the wall. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Thank you, Logic. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Don't get fucking clever with me, pig. You think you're so clever. She hisses. Owned. <laughs> Another splattering of bullet holes on the wall that nobody has ever plastered over. Oh, Pog! I got a bum hat. Plus one reaction speed for twitchiness. Oh, that's incredible. Minus one rhetoric for bum brain. Okay, Boku, you'll sleep well. Admire my fashion. Just a closed door, but you look at it suspiciously. Um, while I'm thinking about it, what was the skill check for that. Um, it's been a week and now they show up. The frick was that? No, really, what was that? Did I just hear someone talking? <clears throat> I wanted to try and find his head. Titus, what a door, placence, damaged ledger. Policeman cloak, Savoy fear, challenging. Yeah. I can't help but notice that the lighting on this rock changes. There must be another way into the building. Oh my god, that was loud. Everyone cover your ears, please. Yes? Okay, good. <laughs> the bell, can you... Ah, oh, it was you who talked. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. Oh, yeah. His one eyes of the things have we would... been following you for a while. One of the things we can use to... <laughs> My brain's only giving me the word peg. One of the things we can use to peg Titus is um, finding other witnesses of the crime. Not looking for any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. Too late, young man. Troubles found you. Sorry, I don't have time for this. I just want to finish my cigarette and be gone. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? All right, but make it quick. Once I finish the cigarette, I have to run. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait, is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. 
it's a more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? God, I love Kim's voice actor so much. He really brought so much to the role. Last week? I don't know. Look. He's an actor, declaiming a soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all from different angles. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Shit. I wish I'd dressed for suggestion. This is a place or Gosh. time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes. Compassion and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on. What's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. Oh, very good. I had my eyes on that stone already. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments, and a man can be in any of them. I feel like we should have the basic ability to look at the rock next to the door for a spare key. We'll just have to go in and see. Equip a flashlight in low light areas. Yes, let's do that immediately. Because I remember this place being dark. Eviction notices and missing pets, baby. Hog. Pretty sure this counts as dark enough to justify the flashlight. Forty two real and slimy shower curtains. Okay, let's go chase after the balcony. Breaker boxes full of cigarette butts and wires. It's probably very deliberate for him to throw the cigarette butt downstairs. Nothing for me right now. What is that? 
Seems to function just as a door. Rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. Mosey. Now that's back to inside, isn't it? Oh, hold on, there is a can over here. With some money. Good. I'm considering spending one of my many, many skill points on a Thor cabinet slot. It feels a bit weird to not be thinking about something. River Sholi and Indo tribes. I'm deeply curious about this just because it seems absolutely useless. We've also got communism. Well, let's get communism. Mm. Let's think about communism. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get... Yeah, let's go ahead and pull them out. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drop the shackle snaps like a twig. I love passing skill checks in this game, they're so viscerally satisfying. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. Breaking and entering for no reason, baby. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. <laughs> and I'm impaired in visual calculus at the moment. Kim, you gotta have to admit Hold I look like second. him. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Kras Mazov? I have to consider and investigate all possibilities. Except that Kras Mazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns, but it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Maybe this bus shows him before he started drinking. Ah, very well. Let's look for identifying features then. <laughs> I appreciate that Kim... Okay, it's not even that he's humoring you, it's that he's given up on resisting and is humoring you for that reason. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? The fastest the way... The fastest way out for Kim is through. Alright, but here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samara, and you don't. Okay, you win. Be Krasmasov, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> oh, poor Kim. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmasov anyway? You fought in the revolution and everything, if you say so. Salute statue. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communal. How fitting.
I'm sorry, a 9mm bullet? Apologies for the... Kim, did you just clip into the wall? Kim, don't do that. Thank you, Kim. I was worried for a second there. I thought I had lost him. It's free money. Locked, locked. Oh, let's have a look at that. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Knock, knock. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock a poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. <laughs> Fine logic. Postcard, baby. The Graffito says, a firing squad for the rich. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> she is dying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? I want to shine my flashlight in your face. She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Yeah, um, yes, yes. where's the sky at? I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Adjust right? the comfy seat. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking mm. a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? What was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's, He's usually, usually home, home in the evening. evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Thank you. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the Communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure. Oh baby, let's look into this alternate universe hammer and sickle. To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Also, some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world. And at the same time, above it. Why white? Because white is the color of peace. Gone. Gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain How? in dirty hallways. You are the big communism builder now. It's you or no one. It's me. Let's go buy some more morale healing juice because... Ah! I kind of refuse to run around without at least one. Got the hanged boy. Leg it.
Oh, that's actually pretty swanky, although we're starting to look like a hipster. And we have a 15 real postcard. Maybe I should get that magnesium based life form thought at this rate. <clears throat> Good. Let's go shine a flashlight in the face of that Joyce lady. We got kind of halfway through the lowdown on the state of the world last time. It'd be good to finish it off this time. Also, I very much like your ship. It's a very nice ship. I help you with? <laughs> More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. What is reach for something fundamental? Oh baby, let's do it. What is all of this? The scent, the sound, the air. What world? The only one. I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. What do you see? Great bodies of water. Forest covered surfaces. Clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. A free zone lifts the hair on the back of your arm. Wind sweeps the surface of the bay. The world is a suzer empty. Hi, Shivers. A vrai shall. There is a term of Indian they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. Elysium. This world does not deserve a term of endearment. That... <laughs> Even if the world would not deserve a term of endearment, I would use a term of endearment for the world aspirationally. The world needs a term of endearment. It does. There are those who would call it hell. What is hell? A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mesk Petro fascists. Let's. I am, after all, bourgeois and female. Hardly the perfect ambassador for the world. <laughs> Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? It's dress for esprit de corps. I believe my clip board. Nope, it's Inland Empire and Empathy. It's really just the Disco Blazer. Welcome back. Let's. You're back. Good. More lessons in basic reality. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. What is 
six kilometers southwest there we go. of the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tinkle takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. I like Esprit de Corps and Shivers in combination because in combination they let you know um, what your squad is doing when they're not talking to you and the times when they talk to you paint them as absolute drongos and dickheads but the rest of the time it's like oh these are professionals and these are my co-workers to his left his partner Emil Mullins whispers you heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez yes he lost his mind Tilbrook answers fingers on the trigger don't worry Emil he pulls it out slowly slowly now he'll find it again We always do. You? You're an officer of the RCM. That's apparently the entirety of our identity to her. Preciso Mundo. Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, Detective. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. He's being sarcastic. We are. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the emergency there we go, as I was and about earlier. Acts, three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a, let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. All three are good to know when we are out policing. So basically, I'm going to avoid the subject and ask the next question. Uh, yeah, I'm a lackey of capital. There's nothing basic about your role, detective. It's true that the RCM. She would have said this regardless of what I said. Seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. That's it. I think I talked about this with regards to Pokemon Sun before. I realized that quite a lot of the dialogue choices made absolutely no difference in the gameplay, but it still felt nice to have your character's words line up with your intent. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. <sighs> ah. Yes, um... They called it the International Zone <laughs> because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. They will never forgive you. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Revacholians get to keep the peace in Revachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police. The only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. Glad to have been of assistance, the little that I know. Anything else? I'm shocked that Elysium is actually the name of the planet. Magnesium based life form. We tell them, hell no, you're about to become a magnesium based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on slow working background radiation to take us first <laughs> into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution, and magnesium is the key. 
You are the first of your species. The next step in human evolution. An advanced magnesium proton man who mags it up, drinks it down, and sniffs it sideways. Jesus Christ, what does this actually give us? <laughs> uh, plus two volition, minus one logic. Um, we do have a use for more volition, I believe. Um, we can ask for money. Why is this one highlighted? Can we actually try the water door again? Yeah. I thought there was a... Oh, it might not have been reset. Damaged ledger, logic, medium. Okay, can I? I'm a bit annoyed that that skill check is sticking on me when I already bought the book. I feel like maybe if I go and look at it again, it'll correctly dissolve. No, I cannot beg Joyce for money. This is tragic, honestly. Um, I am ignoring this because um, she said that it was in the evening. Actually, I should go back and do it. Yeah. Joyce, volition, medium. Class drunk. You know what this means, right? Case solved. Cracked it. All in a good day's work. What do you mean, what did I crack? Look at how working class that drunk is. It's her husband, it's the missing husband. Yes, and you found him. Now go and tell the working class woman. Protect and serve, recruit. Authority is served. Didn't she repeatedly tell you her husband isn't missing her? There's no need for champagne when there's honor recruit. Go and tell the working class woman what you found. Good news everyone, the mystery is solved. Hello, camera? Mm-mm. <clears throat> Boy, it really wants me to look at Claire's J, I guess. I don't know, let's try and zone and see if that fixes it. I'm pretty sure that's a bug. Wow, I'm having a bizarre number of bugs. I've never had a bug in this game before, and then I've had three in this one playthrough. I'm busy. I need to go harass this woman. First of all, you were right that I'm a cockatoo. Excuse me? I don't know. The most talkative one? The what now? You truly are one strange cop, aren't you? God damn it, I already told you. My husband isn't missing. Very well then. Where is he? <laughs> Excuse me? Right, cause working class women come with alcoholic husbands. You know what? Remember, about that what. Never ever say what. You were right. I do have an alcoholic husband. Although not that one. Ha! Ah, Lamb! Knew it! I did, and he is. He's also an alcoholic. No, he's not. Or maybe he is, I don't know. He's probably in the park. Or in Shamrock somewhere, drinking with his friends. I haven't seen him for... Well, to hell with him! <laughs> I can't... 
she sighs, but you can detect a slight hint of gratitude and relief from her face. All right, go ahead. Do you have any questions? Honestly, not that different from you. That's one way to put it, yes. No offense. I'd also add he's a little bit chubby. What else? He was wearing a dark brown leather jacket with a bright blue inner lining. The lining is hand sewn. It's not. I made it myself. The guy down at. It's his cool jacket. God knows it's too cold to run around in this, but he refuses to change. Who cares about the cold when you have your cool jacket to wear? You can completely simplify it. Yes. I even tried throwing it away once, but he just dug it out of the bin. Can you believe it? Honestly, if it's that cool. Well, what can you do? I hope that at least that extra lining helps him keep warm at night. I wouldn't like him to catch cold. Yesterday morning, he went to the library. He went to retrieve my book and he promised, he promised, he'd walk straight back home. Because we talked about this. We talked about not wandering off again. I, I don't know what to do. I honestly don't know what to do with his addiction. It just makes me feel weak. I want to give her a hug. Go for around 36 hours then. Damn, this is a missing persons case. She turns away from you in an attempt to recover. So you are going to look for him. Thank you. Please do. Even though I'm sure he will return home by himself. I'm still sure of that. Yes. I'm sure he will too. When he does, would you let Precinct 57, Kim Kitsuragi, know? I will. Of course, officer. As I said, it's probably nothing. I can't believe her husband is actually missing after all that. <laughs> and the only reason I know is because I pointed at a drunk and said, Is that your husband? I feel bad, but also good, but also bad. Mostly good. I'm glad that I'm managed to get her to admit that she was worried and Ah uh, no, I'm looking for a brown jacket. The large guy here is wearing a blue jacket. We're probably not gonna be able to solve this right away. Um, we can see someone on the roof, so let's go knock on that door. That appears to be a negative. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. I'm so alone. The door is indifferent to your loneliness. The world does not care. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Still no answer. Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. Still nothing. The lieutenant g Yes? Hey, I want to get in. I want tins. Look at that developer right there holding a... Look at that concept art. Why is there a floor plan there? Why do I share a bathroom with Class J? <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, Kim. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. The, the catharsis of the game saying you've earned this bed, combined with the insult, is kind of incredible. Kim also tries not 
to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. No problem, officer. He would like to leave. Shocking. Okay, I think I'm going to invest a point in um, unlocking some of these checks. I'm kind of tempted to do the volition check now that I've... But... <laughs> Perception, interfacing, rhetoric, half-light, empathy. Apparently we can retry the water door. I'm slightly surprised by this. I suspect that the the interface is lying to me, but I want to actually double check it. I also do want to beg for money. Um, sorry, what was I doing out here? Wait, can I still get something from the footprints? What do you see? A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller, who reported the hanging. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashon. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last one day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all... So far, so good. Only one thing missing. Of course, there were eight tracks. But there are only seven hardy boys. I've already talked about this, Cam. There's one pair missing from the Union box. The eighth pair. I'm going to say it was our old soul. Yes, I doubt the Hardys are going to tell us who this person is. For now, it's best if we just keep our eyes open. I'm sure our investigation will eventually lead us to the old soul. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think I will try and get this jacket again. In fact, that's my jacket, isn't it? Against all... God. The fact that there's just a, a pig face laying around. You can sleep after 21 o'clock. Sleeping is good for you. Still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Savoy Fear. Um, remove pant. Remove shoe. Maximize Savoy Fear. And then we go in here and we spend a point Tap. a tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing no one has claimed it for their own frig's sake <laughs> ah, I want it so bad Du Bois, you useless piece of trash no, no that's still too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up there. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks I'm feeling frustrated. 
That's how frustrated I'm feeling. The tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed it for their own. Are you kidding me? That doesn't look very high. I know. You no. really should be able to just no. drop. Sure. Just be careful, okay? I'm going to go level up again and put another point in Savoy Fair because I swear to God. At this point, I'm powered by spite. Find the working class husband. Okay, I should actually double check that the uh, large guy there isn't the working class husband in question. Because they're drinking with co workers. I'm also annoyed because Savoy Fair is impaired by both my pants and shoes. Things I don't have replacements for are in the slots. Get. So, <laughs> I'm basically going to have to run around pantsless in order to make use of the perk points I just got. Looks like the circus left town. All that friend. The clowns are still here. Nah, I need to drop this flashlight. The shadows do not like the complexity of this scene. Which, yeah, I can see it. The number of bottles that you can't recycle is painful. I found recyclables. I, I was going to check the store. Not that I expect to be able to shoulder charge through it, but it's a white check I'm basically obligated to try. Every door with a missing handle stands before Broke you. Broken to the communal department. Okay. If not, the game we weren't lying. Okay. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you. Covered Pain threshold. We got nothing for if that. If not hundreds of similar strings and Let's go. charms, it appears to be lost. Yes. I can't believe I made it. I will if you let me. You smash into the wood and see a small crack appear on the door frame. It's going to take one more try to break through to the other side. But you've done it. Give me just a second. You're not thinking of trying again, are you? Smash again into the door wordless. Smash again into the door fuck the system. Smash again into the door freeze dirt bags. Smash again into the door hands up now. <laughs> Shut to the door and shut fuck it. <laughs> well, I need to pick that one now, don't I? Fuck it hurts. Bent metal. Broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. You are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. <laughs> Yeah, I rip shit apart. Kudos. 
Doctor gained anti object task force. Cam. What is this place? It's the near the world. No, the veil. it's a gym. Though it looks like no one's been here in ages. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. An airy feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations where I'll bet no. one will do. No, let's... You can't stop me looking for supernatural explanations, Kim. God, that's still got ages on it. <laughs> okay, I want my pants again. I can't take Du Bois seriously at all when he's like this. Is that a bull? Pog. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight. Places plates. is probably so pissed at me. It's sixty kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. <sighs> It's just a memory. <laughs> You're right. The weight may fall out. Better not touch it then. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. I really appreciate Kim just laying shit out. I don't suppose I can get any physical instrument, can I? Oh, I can, because I have the white tank top. The barbell waits patiently on the floor, like a dog for its master. This is going to kill me. I should probably just maybe go pick up some more Healy items before I do this. Actually, let's start by returning the <laughs> thing that I shot, put it into the ocean. And then I can get in good with those guys. Um, Placence, do you hate me now? You broke down the back door, the wards, the door. It's all gone now. Dark psychic energy leeching onto my shop. I suppose... It's all over now. I guess there's no escape. It was the only way to... I c mm. Okay, I'm willing to listen. We are set on the path. There's little else to do. Her facade has dropped. Now you see the curiosity behind the fear. Oh, Pog. But, before we go on, did you encounter the malignant entity? I didn't see it, but I seen it. You stuff. did? Then it has to be true. I've suspected that this woman-shaped energy must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you s No. This chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. That's just the girl who chills out on the balcony. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. And do return to me after you've talked to it. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. Goodness, you were already doing good, browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go, go, get back there. The books await you. The books await you. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. 
Bye bye. I'm so glad I finally made it through that door. I've never been through that door before. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? What is this? How are you mocking us? This isn't for Pitonk. Now, now. No need to get angry again, Rene. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. There's not gonna be no time. That's how it is, huh? Fine. I guess you did attempt to write your hooliganism. Consider it forgiven. I did look at the statue. Ah, yes. King, King Philippe III. On his steed. A reminder of what Crevachel once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. Cocaine? Cocaine? -um. Sounds like our kind of king. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a Shut up, electrochemistry. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who decisively without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. And Lesion is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Unbreakable resolve. Right. Composure, I think we can be push that in our direction by changing clothes. Plus one composure. Somehow. Plus one composure. Let's give it a shot. Vigilance officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Fingers crossed. As Remy turns yes. from to his partner and back, the medals on his chest rattle and glare. He keeps his spine straight and his ribcage lifted, displaying them proudly. Ah. Two, the larger one is shaped like a cross, while the smaller medal resembles the sun. A crowned head in front of two crossed rifles. The, the sheer quantity of writing in disc releasing is one of the pleasant things about it. It's the Croix de Bravour, Cross of Valor. The cross was the highest battlefield decoration in Suzerain's armed forces, awarded for exceptional bravery in the line of duty, in service of King Frisel I. I'm not even interested in any of the... That's a lie. I'm kind of interested in the politics of the seed in quite a lot. But... The history doesn't include anything that traditionally interests me, and yet I still find myself captivated just because it's so... densely weaved. I think I've talked before about... Let me try that again. A lot of media takes place... in a world that feels unreal. Um, Dickensian dialogue is an example of getting around that, in that since Dickens was paid by the word, he made his characters ramble and ramble and ramble and not get to the point when they were talking, which is what people actually do in real life, but it makes for absolutely terrible media... well, not terrible because Dickens, but... but it's not the most compelling way of delivering media. Um, So, having a counterexample just points out the fact that in media, characters always talk succinctly and if they stammer, it's an entire character trait, whereas people take a moment to compose their thoughts mid-sentence all the time in real life. The density of historical weave in Disco Elysium and its lack of fear in approaching contemporary political issues um, mm, uh, 
it's possible that it's just because it supports my own politics a bit with its nuanced view on communism and everything, but yeah, by not shying away from politics and by having an incredibly densely wit written past and some quite frankly fantastic and diverse voice acting, it just makes it feel more realistic than basically any other piece of media I've consumed. A small blue star inside an orange sun. It has the word Valiance written below. I'm quite certain that's his violence composure, but whatever you say. The setting sun was a decoration used to distinguish seasoned combat veterans in service of King Frizzle I during the revolution. For bravery. For bravery? For doing my duty in the heat of battle, for looking my mortality in the eye, when men like Gaston here hid in the bushes and shat themselves. He saved some muddy princeling who foolishly strolled into the front line in his gown of velvet and gold. Saved a princeling? It was on the first months of the revolution here in Revachel. Unrest was spreading like wildfire. Marauders had taken most of the Koran and were getting really ambitious. King Frisell thought he could end it all in one decisive strike. Sent his cousin, Drisson, to put an end to the unrest. Alas, the young Drisson was all piss and no vinegar. Oh, piss and no vinegar. I'm gonna have to remember that one. Talkative feathers to battle. Even his rifle was god blated. Shown from five clicks away. Can you imagine the asininity? Yes. He really despises that Drisson fellow. Purple velvet tunic. Mm. That isn't exactly camo. Yeah. To keep the long and bloody story short, Drisson marched us against the partisans in Koron. And when I say march, I mean made us walk into captured enemy territory, single file, like toy soldiers, while he rode in front on his giant red stallion. So he got killed, right? The rebels were smart. They let us come real close before opening fire. Suffice to say, it was carnage. I'm not going to support the rebels on this one. I mean, they are clever, but I don't really care about the communard point that much. I got shot in the left shoulder. Blood path? I down. assume they mean blood bath. Just a flesh wound. But just as I turned over, the prince fell into the mud next to me. He was missing his lower jaw. Oh, Christ. Then his horse, driven mad by the noise and smell of gunpowder, stepped on my leg and shattered my knee. I grabbed my sidearm and shot the beast in the head. Then everything went black. Capitaine Arnaud, le fléau des chevaux. The bane of horses. <laughs> when I came to, it was all over. It was just me and Joe Lestresson, gurgling in the blood-soaked mud right next to me. The Dink had taken numerous flesh wounds and lost a lot of blood. But despite missing his jaw, he seemed hesitant to die. Tougher than he looked, that one. This would never happen to Johnny Longjaw. Sorry, Johnny Lawjaw. So I grabbed the dink and started crawling. Kept going until the 59th Cavalry picked us up. Through some miracle, we both survived. And the jeweler street convinced Frisell to give me a medal for not leaving him to die in his own blood. Peace and shit. He was the commanding officer and... I was on duty, just doing my job. Shouldn't hand out medals for that. Thirteen months later, I received the sun for distinguished service. It's not worth mentioning. You sense he's downplaying it. He did a lot more than his duty. More than anyone's duty. It's in his spine, in his billowing breasts, and untarnished self-worth. The old Carabinier. Why do you despise the guy who statue. marched you to His your death and got you ambushed? What Monseigneur Modesty is not telling you is that he crawled over seven kilometers before the cavalrymen found him and Rison. Two days later, that was. 
and that even wise crawling with mongled off dead prince on his back, he still managed to murder three rebels on his way. Is that pride in his voice? It's deep down, but maybe even unbeknownst to the man himself, it's there. Sorry, officer, but you're reading me all wrong. I'm a man of peace, and these kinds of bloody heroics You're a man who's full of shit. Men like Rene himself. Certainly not to me. How did you find the story to be, officer? Bon dieu. You and Gaston must be related. His blood runs yellow too. Maybe, Since the French maybe, maybe, but also be in mine, officer. They don't end this out for anyone with a service record. Oh no, you have to get shot repeatedly, and you need to get your hands bloody too. Really, really bloody. Do not speak of what you know nothing about, Poltroon. Duty is something you will never understand. Bah. There were many such stories in those days. Many such men, too. True Revisholians. Men with backbone. As opposed to those revolutionaries. No backbone in them. Definitely not. No backbone involved in them. Revolting. Oh, yes, René, yes. Men were bigger, girls were prettier, and everyone wore the fascia. Law, please, bring those days back, if you can. <laughs> I appreciate the Zarkas. I'm not getting into this with you again. Uh, officer, was You are in fact else? totally wearing rose tinted glasses, bro. You should try to come up with a heroic story of your own. Impress this old soldier. Can I bump up my drama in any way? That's a red chick. Nah, I've got many points for conceptualization and none for drama. What does my halo say? What was I doing? Oh, I was getting a health potion from Freet. Really blowing my entire budget on health potions and magnesium today. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles. Nas okay, here. I hope Saint Batiste makes you feel better or something. I appreciate her. I guess I'm putting putting another friggin point in Savoy Fair. So I'm pretty sure I know the malignant entity that Placence was talking about because I happen to know from my previous playthrough where I did not get much further in than I am now that um. Uh, the girl on the left balcony who has poured, poured paint down the wall um, lives in a chimney. Up there. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Oh, I never talked to her in this one run. Let's fix that. I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Go where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Bobby hooves off little old lady. What for? Well, if it's for art, but 
What kind of art are we talking about? Sounds like you're just about to live out yourself. <laughs> Achievement in. unlocked. Literally Not the sorriest cop on earth. I can't have shit art on my conscience. Crush your man's dreams like that. I hope you're happy. I guess art just isn't really you. Because you suck. In life and in everything. Conceptualization impossible. Watch your back, Ungular. You've got eyes on you. I know. Can I get in over here? No, I never unlocked that. We need to get back in this apartment complex. Open all the damn doors. And then go bother Cindy in person. We're closed by Martinet Realty Associates. Yep, that certainly is a foreclosing. A shift in temperature. The air chills around mm, you. Shivers. Dust settles on the stony floor. A former architect stands before a slice of window. A room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen. With Let's go through falling this. down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging the furniture have been jotted down. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. That's sad. Someone who deserved it wanted to make this place work. And couldn't. Ran out of resources, I assume. Okay, does this exit. Where does this lead, actually? A rava shop. A rava shop. Okay, it does lead there. I do think it's locked unless you have the key, though. Let's go piss to Cindy in person. See a container you can't open? Equip a pry bar. I will need to keep that in mind. Oh, Pog. Two point two real. That's nuts. Ah, free jeans. When you say equip a pry bar, do you mean like now? I see. Oh, that sound is a cue for pry bar. I've been, I have been very foolish. I did not understand this correctly. Okay, let's play Sandy some more because I'm pretty sure she's who I want to talk to. Oh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves. But here you are. We've evolved. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. Thank you. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Ooh, 
Not only have you found my address, you've discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. Like me. Right Valid. now, I'm doing nothing at all. Shoot, piggy. It's what you do, isn't it? Red tide heavy fuel oil, intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. That's some clever cultural You ain't commentary. seen nothing yet, piggy boo. The lieutenant is desperately searching for another handkerchief. That was the wrong line. Hatred, disgust, it's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. She's... Mm, she's fine. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershaw. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit ah. today's. On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Have you got a crush on her? Aching for an opportunity to defend her honor. No. Okay. Let's continue on with our other angles of investigation. At the very least, I have learned how to use the dang pry bar properly. You hear someone. The posters in this place is kind of incredible. Ex Exaunt. Oh wait, no, I need to go up to the balcony and locate the room 28, which I located earlier. <laughs> you know, it's taken me this long to realize that Mejihead probably goes to sleep at some point. That sound applies only to containers, not doors. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. No, no, no one no. answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? The smoker on the balcony. This is why we are here, right? Why tomorrow? You might know something about the murder. So tomorrow 9 p.m.? Don't worry. It's mostly all still here. You can remember things. You got this. Tomorrow 9 p.m. right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry, you'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. Okay. Hmm. Let's... Now, now that we've tagged that event, which I'm very glad that I did today. I wish I'd done it yesterday, in fact, but whatever. We investigated other things. I think it's time to take a third run on that jacket. Additionally, I still need to investigate the, uh, 
behind the wooded door. But let's start with the jacket first because as covered I want that jacket at this point out of spite. Flashlight in one hand, pry bar in the other, just looking like an absolute thief. It's a good look for a copper. Figure it out, Du Bois. I'm taking my hand off the keyboard for a second here. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. Savoy fear. Remove. Remove. <laughs> Why has it got to be plus electrochemistry and minus reaction speed? That's the combination I need the least. How do they look at least? Pretty average. Okay, Savoy Fair, Savoy Fair, nothing. Well, at least I can dress in the jacket and pretend that I'm a well-dressed person. Skadoosh. Except changes in clothes. A tarpaulin cloak is still caught on the railing. No one has claimed I'm going to lose her. my shit if I don't get it this time. Fucking finally. Do you know how <laughs> I didn't get this in my previous game either. As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. Ankles tingling from the tension, blood roaring in your ears. You are ready for your rendezvous with the concrete people below. Martinez goes about its daily routine as you soar through the air. The loud voices of protesters mix with the engine sounds from the traffic jam. Well, we are, Waves of course, going to listen to shivers. And dense, salty sea air fills your lungs. The corpse is dominating the yard, mm. and the stench is nauseating. Even so far from the epicenter, it brings tears to your eyes. <laughs> oh, look at that As grand the concrete floor landing. welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive. Alert, capable, must be the adrenaline. Yes. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least we can explore the harbor now. With your feet firmly planted on the concrete, the noise of the harbor rushes back in. Pog. I can't believe it, I finally made it into... Oh, shit. One is pretty core and one shivers. Nice. I think I love that actually. It's even it's better than the disco ass blazer, which I can now basically sell. I'm assuming. That shouldn't have been so much diff difficulty. Something about the idea of selling the, um... Okay, hold on. The Let's upgrade to an actual fucking shirt, perhaps. Oh my god, it's really just picking what I wanted to lose for reaction speed, isn't it? We probably want the perception when we're just walking around. Oh my god, I forgot how sad Harry Du Bois looks under that. Wow, we almost look like an actual person. 
The pockets of these new jeans are perfect for sticking your hand into. Makes you look cool, calm, and collected. As your hand enters the pocket, your I fingers it's brush money. against something soft yet crinkly. Hey, it's a chewing gum wrapper. It reminds you of the fruity juice of apricots. You should inspect it closer if you have time. Something about the wrapper's texture is familiar. By the way, the raw materials were most likely exported from Sea Guy, the apricot suzerainty. And okay, we're getting to move on. Encyclopedia likes to waffle. How is our perception? Looks fine. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet or some ancient temple. Another planet or an ancient temple. Wow. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger, like a glow, <sighs> with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor, until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes, made of toffee, cream, and distance. You just had to take a dive. It's so, so familiar. I should probably pawn the yellow man mug, it's not like I'm going to be showing it to anyone. Wait, is this all... stuff I can collect? Yeah. Can I hobo my way through this? I can. Powers of bottles, not for long. I'm gonna be so rich from recycling. Okay, what's in here? This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Oh. You need to rest. Your body is aching. Getting in here has taken something out of you. Have a seat. If you must. But please hurry. We are pretty easy to spot up here. Nothing incriminating catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. Looks like the inhabitant is rather pedantic when it comes to order. Take the picture. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man, Rene. This one seems like it has only sentimental value. Form. The girl is young and very pretty. She is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that picture of Rene? I'm <laughs> making an artistic photo. Collage. You're really interested in that old soldier. Not sure I understand your fascination, but sure, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of time. The chair is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Stale air floods through your nostrils. Not a single mote of dust floats inside your lungs, though. The inside of the booth is immaculate. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. They are slightly out of date. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, sudden death, hair death, Erectile malfunction, malfunction, critical <laughs> flatulence, watery blood, black mucus, uncontrollable weeping, increased sensitivity to la opera, inoperable joint disorder, total, total spinal, spinal collapse. collapse. Maybe this was a bad idea. 
You stand and exit the booth. Yeah, let's not take the shady expired painkillers. This game has an achievement for finishing the game without ever actually inspecting the body. I'm definitely going to go for that at some future run. I don't think I like our odds of being stealthy in here. Also, I'm kind of glad that I found a way in because it turns out that they do have a night watchman. It's free money. Valsant. This is a lot more industrial contemporary industrial than I expected. Side money, be careful. Harry. Pry bar time. Oh, damn, Du Bois actually looks like a real human being. It's kind of incredible. Money? Ding dang old adverts. Are you back from the ad? No, it's making me hungry as well. Yeah, I am also hungry now. Container, container. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. That's a medium difficulty conceptualization problem. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisoft on Moondi. Container, container, used to be well pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind. If I'm you know not a scab. I mean, oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Sure, mister. Bye bye now. Let me put on my smart glasses and ask you that again. Inland Empire, Half Light. Inland Empire and Empathy. Conceptualization is pretty. No more logic. No more logic. That's okay, the one logic will oh, be good. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They could... No trouble at all, mister. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them Fingers containers crossed. here. 
The containers in the yard are yeah. green in Wild Pine's livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in Union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarder's Union logo on them. No, not really. Miss Erat doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing it's in It's not going to be empty. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Rather, it's going to contain something that they want to hide. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar yeah. and I went to the same He's school. He's adorable in a way. We were boys. Oh, Mr. Everard is where he always is. In his office, of course. Points to the two joint containers on your right. Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumours. Mode. False accusations, speaking as a Kiwi. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. Okay, let's go find Everard. I'm sure this will be fun and not horrifying. Let me just review my clothing. Not gonna need conceptualization, might need suggestion. Physical instrument might not hurt. Reaction speed versus Savoy Fair, reaction speed would probably be better. Perception versus Inland Empire. Ooh. And it's Brita Korosh and Shivers versus. We're inside and talking with someone, so shivers isn't useless. Half light probably doesn't matter much. Suggestion probably not going to help as much as pre record here. Before you is a walk <laughs> of a man seated behind a large chair. Jesus desk. Christ, look at that portrait. Work, not the least bit surprised to see you. With great effort, he straightens himself up in his chair, yet says nothing. He simply stares at you. Welcome, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Kitsuragi. It's good of you two to stop by. Please, have a seat. I'm Everard, Everard Clare, head of the Debardes Union here at Martinez. I'd offer you my hand, but unfortunately my health prevents me from getting up. You understand? Of course. He looks extremely comfortable. The tiny folding chair, on the other hand, looks like a torture device. You go ahead, detective. I've... fuck you, Kim. Whatever he has in store for you, it can't be good, he thinks. I'll do my best. Forget about that. What's with this Dubois stuff? You're getting some seriously bad vibes from that man. Please, Mr. Dubois, let us converse in a civilized manner. As equals. Take a seat. I insist. It's nothing. Yes, that's probably right. It's nothing. Forget about it. Filter it out. Very well, Mr. Dubois. I respect a man with strong convictions. I, too, have convictions. One of which is that I will not engage I will with squat. any man who won't face me at eye level. 
Should you find yourself more amenable in the future, I'd gladly resume I have heard of this. But yeah. until then, I'm afraid I must ask you to leave. You're no titan of volition, buddy. He's got you in a fork. Sit down or leave. Crap. Excellent, Mr. Dubois. I can see that you're a reasonable man, and reasonable men, reasonable men can be of great use to one another. So tell me, how can the head of the Debardes Union help a representative of the Revishal Citizens Militia today? The chair you're sitting on has got to be the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's violating your backside. Oh god, I hope it doesn't oh, by the fire way, off again. I heard you got a rather rude reception from a certain Lawrence Gart. Some people have no manners, it pains me to say. This should take care of that nonsense. It should be sufficient to cover your expenses for a few days and patch over your differences with a cafeteria manager. Go ahead, take it. Wow, that's 25 real. That's good money. You need it. Take that comically large chick and shove it up your ass. Yeah, nah, this is a bribe. This is the bribiest bribe that ever bribed. Okay, okay. I respect a man Pain. with principles. No handouts, then. Now, I'd like to set your mind at ease about one other matter. Your lost gun. Let me assure you, Union people are on it as we speak. I've got my best hounds looking for that lost gun. I don't think I'm supposed to like this character. Between the portrait and the voice... His slug-like lips move, but all you hear is an echo. Lost gun. Lost gun. Lost gun. The world is swallowed by a black hole of fear. I'll just take the head for the moment. Only two words escape its gravitational pull. Lost and gun. When he said, don't worry. He actually meant, be very worried. I know everything, Harry. Right now, I know that you're worried. Don't be worried. Everything's Harry going to be Du Bois. Right. It's not like you left it loaded. You didn't lose a loaded gun. Local children aren't out there playing with it right now, pointing it into their own mouths. It's in a safe place. I just know it. I have a feeling everything's going to be all right. It was loaded. There were two bullets in it. You always keep at least two barrels loaded. God, you're sweating. Your knee is jerking. You're about to cry, aren't you? You're about to How? cry because you lost your gun and those children are gonna shoot themselves with it. You want to cry? Shut up, composure. God, you're weak. Whatever you do, don't cry. You'll think you're disgusting. I don't care about Everett's opinion. Mr. Dubois, you don't look so good. What is this, Mr. Dubois? He keeps repeating. What is he trying to pull here? You need to cool the fuck down. Chill. Mr. Dubois! Mr. Dubois! Harry! There are no Harrys. Mr. Dubois, are you okay? Can I get you a glass of water or something? Are you having some kind of medical emergency? Yes, it's being caused by your chair. Maybe you could use your hands somehow. In a kind of throw-in motion. Like your throw-in that Mr. Dubois act right back at him. He's Mr. Dubois. What an odd demonstration of... Uh, <laughs> you've got me, Harry. I don't even know what. As entertaining as it was, I'm afraid we're wasting our time. And I'm an extremely busy man, as I'm sure you are too. Pull your shit together, Everett. Okay, enough. We are here to ask you some questions pertaining to a murder investigation. Quick, here's your window. Get yourself together and ask him questions. Police officer questions. 
It is about time to stop embarrassing yourself. Questions will help you regain some of your lost dignity. I'm told the Union is involved in the local drug trade. What? Harry, how could you say that to me? You know I appreciate a joke as much as any Johnny Fat Guy, but I can't take slander. Are you actually investigating this? The reaction appears to be sincere, but it's impossible to tell with this guy, honestly. I appreciate the lion parentheses. You've hurt me, Harry. Me, a friend. But you know what? I trust you, like I trust all my friends. And I know you'll never talk to me about this again, because you don't want to wound me. So do what you want, and let's change the subject. He's hiding his real reaction beneath courtesy. Thank you for your understanding. We will continue to do what we must. You too, Lieutenant. <laughs> you know, I like you, but you never were my favorite. I'm a Harry guy. I'm Team Harry. No digger. Did we have anything else to do here, Harry? Kim just... Everard is throwing out a constant barrage of skill checks and Kim just passed one of them. Of course. Let us dispatch with the formalities. You call me Everard, I call you Harry. My god, so it's true. I didn't want to believe it, but you are a fantastic science fiction amnesiac cop, aren't you? What are the odds of that? I think the odds of that are very low. It might be a good idea to hide your confusion. I mean, see what his game is first. So good to hear that, Harry. Apparently, my sources were wrong. However, if you did have a spot of memory trouble, I could help you out. With my big fat folder. Words flow like a river of honey from his lips. I guess word has already reached him. No matter. No harm done. Petty. Are you trying to tell me you've gotten hold of some of our documents? Mr. Kitsuragi, would you mind? Me and Harry are talking about his lost identity right now. Don't just jump to the folder. That's not smart. Shows you're on the edge. Do some probing first. It's Harry. Harry Dubois. Wait, I thought you are Harry Dubois. Don't be silly, Harry. Harry Dubois? That's a real man's name. A union man's. <sighs> Mr. Kitsuragi doesn't seem even slightly empathetic to your memory loss, Harry. I, however, wish to help you any way I can. But of course, Harry. Your precinct is the 41st and you live in Jamrock. You're a Jamrock boy. A long way from home, but that's okay. Accurate, but vague. He doesn't really seem to know any more about it. Family? Harry, you're not a family man. There's not one peep of family in here. Unless you think you're a family man, do you strike yourself as a family man, Harry? I'm tempted to pick this. It feels like I'm walking into a trap. But Everett would have to be pretty overtly aggressive in order to actually deal damage with this one. Well, yes. I'm sure you're going to make one little boy or a girl very happy and proud one day, Harry. What kind of cop does it say I am? Well, Harry, if I were to sum you up in one word, it would be apologetic. Yes. You seem to be, a lot of the time... But right now, there's no reason to be. 
Let loose a little. Be you. I wonder what happens if you charge out of the um wheeling and rags and run straight at Everard. He's probably just making a guess based on your recent activity in what to Yeah, no, uh, Harry Dubois was not a um sorry cop beforehand. Ah, this my friends in your organization gave it to me, Harry. This translates into aha. You guys are so corrupt. Except it doesn't have any historical information after all. I find that very suspicious. May I have a look? I'm afraid this is meant for union eyes only, Mr. Kitsuragi. I'm sure you understand. Please continue, Harry. Didn't expect drama to be useful, but... As you look at the folder, Evera covers it with his hand and pets it. Is he trying to hide that it's not a real RCM folder? It certainly doesn't have the RCM stamp on it. Okay, Harry, you got me. This is from the Census Bureau, not the RCM. Those Census Bureau people are absolutely corrupt. You should do something about them. He got the name from the Census Bureau, and everything else from your actions here in Martinez. Yeah. Yes, yes, Mr. Kitsuragi, from the Census Bureau. Like I said, now I'm actually a very busy man. So is there anything else I can do for you, Harry? Not too busy to play games, that apparently. Means he doesn't really know anything about you. A pity. The mystery of you will have to remain a mystery for the time being. Yes, that's what I said. Try to keep up, okay? Let's move on. I want to talk about oh, hanging. Oh, of course. That's your main thing here. That's why you're in Martin Ames. I know everything that goes on around here, and I would love to discuss it with you. I mean, it's no secret that the lynching is connected to the strike. So much to talk about. Honestly, it's been weighing on me so heavily. I understand you need to interview me. Say nothing. But there's a thing that's been keeping me up at night. I want to talk about the hanging. I mean, if we could just calmly talk, exchange information, we could blow this thing wide open. You fill a shit. Yes, that sounds good. Let's do that. But I can't think straight with this thing weighing on me. You're police officers, aren't you? I have a crazy idea. You guys are basically door-opening machines. Incredibly talented at opening doors. Kim, is that true? Are we door-opening sure machines? I'm not sure I understand. If you're asking us to break down someone's door, it's not going to happen. Come now. I just need you to go open a little door for me and leave it unlocked. A simple thing. Absolutely nothing shady about it. No. An excellent opportunity presents itself, sire. You could win the trust of the arch liar, pretend to play into his hand. Then, should you wish, bend his efforts towards your own. Okay, I like drama's idea of th things better. I'm a very busy man, and Shut more up. importantly, I don't have that extraordinary physique you do. You look like you could run around all day. You want to send someone a message that the police are working for you. I repeat, I'm a very, very busy man, Mr. Kitsuragi, and therefore I must occasionally enlist outside help. So what will it be, Harry? Who's oh, no it? one's. It's just a weasel. A weasel lives there. Nothing for you to worry about. A loud, blabbering weasel. When weasels feel no one is watching, they start acting foolishly. Just go there, unlock the door, and leave it open. It's been such a burden on me, Harry. I just want this to be over so I can discuss business with you. Harry, my dear friend, I am what people call a local bigwig. I know everything that goes on in Martin Ames. Fantastic, my friend. Just let me know when it's done and we can take our So, I'm not going to complete this level. in a straight line. You can get the key from Manana. He's down by the gates. Manana's like a free agent in the union. Special operations, hardened socialist, a real free thinker too. He'll tell you precisely where the door is. One last thing, Harry. Just open the door. You don't need to go in or anything. I just want that weasel to come home and see the unlocked door. 
Can we get the fucking dead body you down? You might have noticed there's one hanging on the tree behind the hostel cafeteria. Oh my. Don't take this question personally, but why would I get involved in this matter? Mr. Clare, the man was hanged with a cargo belt. A steel reinforced cargo belt. It's safe to assume the Union had something to do with the murder. Plus the confession of several of your Besides, boys. Besides, getting the body down would benefit all of us. It's a stain on the neighborhood. I can certainly see how having him up there might start affecting some real estate values. But of course, all joking aside, I am going to help you. Jean-Luc, my boy, I'm sending two police officers down. They have a dead body in a tree problem they need help with. Namely, they need it to be taken down. Finally. And Jean, please take it easy with the race signs. That's a yes to getting the body down, no to the race signs. Jean-Luc. You can find Jean-Luc down at the gates. He's the big impressive one. You know, tattoos, muscles, ethnic looking. Can't miss him. Great guy. Ethnic looking. Aren't you going to ask me how I got in? Harry, honestly, I'm just relieved you didn't get a hernia. A man your age... Say nothing. Yes, oh, yes, shoot. Harry. You are obviously in peak physical condition. Anyway, I assure you, I am a very well-informed man. Information reaches me before I even get the chance to request it. Yes, your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, your best asking men. kids, grandmas, everyone. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and... Effort. I am also looking for the gun. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Who knows? Only one thing is certain. If you work with him, you're going to get it back. And working with him might be the only way to do it. The only way to do it. Moot point. Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. Of course. I understand. We help you, you help us. I've talked oh, to Joyce. that's very nice. I haven't gotten around to her yet. I'm very, Is very water? busy, you see. I hope you're getting along. Better than I am with you. One thing I want to make very clear, Harry, is that this is not some kind of union versus corporation situation. Everyone is just pals here. Just pals. We're all trying to do what's best for Martin A's here. Don't feel like you can't cooperate with her because you and I are such good friends and I'm helping you get that nasty body down from the tree. And with finding your lost gun. I'm not a jealous guy. Yes, yes. Low balling, of course. This isn't a casino, Harry. Real people, real livelihoods are at stake here. But everything's a casino for those rich types. His expression makes it clear. This is childish and irresponsible behavior. As in his behavior is childish and irresponsible, or Joyce's? If she actually wants to see me, she will find a way. Any good negotiator would. And I just don't have anything to discuss with a bad negotiator. It's a fortress. He knows she can't get in there. He doesn't want to see her. It's as simple as that. What happened to the previous negotiator, in your words? What do you mean, Harry? Nothing. I let him go. He's an old man, Harry. I wanted him to spend more time with his family. God knows how long he's got left. Harry! I have little people in my organization. I would never call someone a midget. What is this? Honestly, I'm beginning to think you're a midget, Harry. I'm only kidding, Harry. You're not a midget. No one is. We're pals. Christ, that was like... That wasn't a crack in the mask, that was a deep rift. Vanished? Harry.
sorry, the woman left her casserole in the oven and couldn't make it here in time for the voting. Oh, did I leave my casserole on? Better go home and check. The election can wait. When she got back, the whole thing was over. Wait, there was no mention of a casserole from Joyce. Harry, Harry, Harry. Do not fixate on this little matter. Maybe it was a rabbit stew, or a hairdryer, or an iron. The point is, her heart wasn't in it. Mine was. Of course, Harry. Let me just assure you this. one more time. It's perfectly okay to share anything we discuss here with this Joyce. This is a completely transparent organization. I have no interest in what she is doing, but I myself have nothing to hide. Your business is your business, and I respect your privacy. Just remember, none of this is secret. Tell her about all of it. My brother's picture, my singing swordfish clock. Tell her how overweight I am and how I'm helping you find your lost gun. Tell her about everything. Everett doesn't mind. It is rather interesting to tell people things about each other, isn't it? It was nice telling him about her right now. I didn't tell him much about Joyce. Wait. You need this to get in and out through the gate. Here, you're one of us now. A real red and white union man. Take care, Harry. Great. I hope I never have to talk to him again. That character is calculated to be as antagonizing as possible. It was a bit of a scattershot approach with some things that did and didn't work on me, but it was so multifaceted that just... God. Go look at the empty container. This dockyard is kind of a huge friggin' mess. And with a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. Quiet, yes. The harbor sleeps as the strike <laughs> rages in the distance. Harry, no, you aren't container certified. Brain certified. Has been fulfilled. Moving this container, of course. For this purpose, it was built. For this purpose, it has acted. And now, it will rest. You're breaking the fourth wall there, and I can't see how that was worth the records. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. The crane does not return to its original position. Good. It does not move at all. Falson Before you bail. stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. <sighs> Is this like your thing with that wall again? You do? Because I don't. There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? There may very well be, but we are not here to look for that. It would be useful. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the Union, right? You attempt to turn the handle. To your left, the Lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. No reply. 
Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rotara, okay. since you were last here. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because what wasn't an option? Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. That was worth a shot. If I... When you push the button, the crane does not rip. Okay. Out here where I was hoping that pressing the button again would cause it to revert to its original location. All those empty wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone party. Really, really hard here. Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. Yes, this scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. Yeah, mosey time. I assume I need to go through here to get out. I'm amused by the idea of put using Savoy Fear to make an actual speedrun build. That looks commie as heck. An imposing combination of a punch clock and a payphone is looking down at you from the wall. A note on the side says, Tokens unavailable due to strike. Use change. Okay, I did need to call... What's her name's husband? The machine swallows your coin and seems to be waiting for your next move. Interfacing, huh? Your fingers run over the dial pad. Zero, zero, five. That's the dialing code for Rivershaw. A lot of my Four passwords nine, are stored in my muscle two, memory. I don't actually consciously know that. Of that. Before entering the final numbers. Nine, nine, three. Calling. Calling. Still calling. Then. Video Ravishal, 24 hour video rental. You rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lami, how may I help you? Video Ravishal is a 24 hour video rental. You rent 8 and 10 millimeter film for home use. This is Lami. Sir, I don't know. It's a video rental. Maybe you rent videos here. No. Maybe you call to extend your rental period? Do you need to extend your rental period? Let me fire up the machine. Here we are. You haven't rented anything in five years, but you still have a copy of Blue Ocean Hell from November 46. Whoa, not a fun film, that one. Ugh, it's not an easy watch. After the death of his daughter and subsequent divorce, Jemsk immigrant Ikidius Wojcik tries to come to terms with the onset of dementia. No wonder no one's been missing it. Still, it would be great if you could return it to us. We're on the corner of Voyager and Maine. On the corner of Voyager and Maine. A large neon <laughs> ship is props on it. On the side of a building. Video Revishol, 24 hours. It's raining and there is almost no traffic on the street. A woman's footprints in the mud lead away from the front door. Tiny heels tiptoeing down the road. Beautiful steps, light footed with a lifetime ahead of them. You look up and the air seems to grow darker. Suddenly, you feel like you don't want to hear about video rentals anymore. You don't want to hear about any of it. It was all shit. It's it. That's enough for you today. Let's conclude this call. Mazovian socio-economics. Communist time. Nord point nord 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil, child-murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit-eating grin. 
All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He has started to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over, personally, with his socio-economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy, with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. Left-wing dialogue options give 4 XP. But several downsides. Liquid in the pot looks almost On sinking. second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork laying around like this. I know, right, Kim? The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of brown folders. Hundreds of documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials coming into Revachol from the outside world, from Muindi, Grad, and even Ilmara. And the same materials being handed over to companies inside Revachol. Savic Seeds, Kuhlo, you should probably go to bed. Coal City, I should probably go to La bed. Delta, and Jamrock are listed among the many districts where the imports are being sold. It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company names, dates, quantities, and percentages. You try to focus, but the lines are getting blurry. Volition. Whatever's hidden here is hidden well. Concentration isn't enough. Only a trained accountant with a background in logistics would be able to really. Ah, uh, I'm sorry it. to hear. However, happy to keep company there. A little handwritten note stuck on the side of the drawer. Ugh. Note. It appears to be a to do list written in large, uneven capital letters. Remember, Leo, Everard's shoes. Special whirling borscht. Water Everard's plants. Sweet office floor. More banners. All items on the list have been crossed out, and the note itself is crumpled. One of his aides must have left it. Nothing incriminating here. The special borscht seems a bit odd in the list. Remember, Leo, all items on the list have been crossed the drawer of slides. Okay, we need to go and ask about the special borscht from the Wheel of New Rags. We also need to continue robbing the Union. Steel, magnesium. Pog. Free glasses. I sure hope nobody cares. There is no combat in this game? Yeah, pretty much. It's all skill checks. It is entirely skill checks. It is still very fun. There is a lot of writing in it. It is very writing dense. Manana. So, how'd you like a harbor? You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man too, probably. It's but a rest area on the path leading across Giving for XP. plains. Right. You talk to the boss, eye to eye. Like men of the plane. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. A key, huh? What door is this key supposed to open? Oh, say no more. I got you. I got that key right here. And let me tell you, it's mighty good of you to help us out during the strike. Working class solidarity, as they say. I'm doing it for the working man. I knew this man was a comic. And it's a good thing you're doing too. Thanks. What you're looking for is a basement door behind the greenhouse. That's behind the whirling and rise. That's all I know. Our organization is what you call compartmentalized. Means we keep out of each other's business. Makes you susceptible to being a cat's paw for crime. Okay, but where did you get the key from? The janitor gave it to me. Nice fella. We talked about life and things that really, truly matter. 
none of this mess we're in, this jiving and juggling. What's it for? To feed our children, I guess. I'm more of a philosophical dog worker. I like to talk about the big picture stuff. Who I am, who you are, what we are fighting for. He means he's not going to tell you because he doesn't know. But he will shoot his mouth off with you now that you're working for Everhart. Who he is and what they're fighting for. This is interesting. Los Ardis? They're an independent militant group. A independent bit too high but it comes really? with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Ebrard's law. But really, they're just like you. We're negotiating our share. Aye. All of it. However, right now we want all the harbor workers to be on the company's board. So they could take part in the decision-making process. This seditious talk sounds like communism. Just so we're on the same page. Communism is basically wanting to kill the rich people or deporting them to a labor camp in Southeast Grad. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. But don't say that out loud if you're a communist. Are you a communist? No. I don't think I'm a communist. Seeing something of value and saying I want it all to myself is a much older and simpler notion. No science to it at all. Okay. Even a weak child can think it. The only things holding someone back are I can't and I shouldn't. I have nothing against communists. They are honorable boyaderos. And they have good analysis. But my own code serves me well. If my code starts failing, a code can fail a man as well as a man can fail a code, then I will have to submit to a new one. Which may well be communism. Your code seems to be doing pretty good. He knows who he is. Firmly grounded. Has no need to reinforce or elaborate his political identity to himself or others. See, I'm primarily a lazy person. <laughs> sure thing. Welcome this back. Was great. We talk with Manana. He's not a commie. He's just kind of like a self-interested worker. Any idea? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? The man whispers a jaunty tune. Yeah, no, a I'm not getting anything out of him anyway. His hair. I want to ruin that lorry truck driver's life more so. Oh, wait, hold on. I need to talk to Measurehead again. Sorry, Jean-Luc. Descent has only worsened since I last saw you. Hey, you I'm getting better. Really, let yourself go. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach. I can't believe that leader hit is actually how sorry, measure hit. I salute your cunning, and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. You're going to make a huge fucking mess. You're so noble, Measure Head. There's a but. But, while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. 
That's shady as fuck. This is the uncomfortable result of not taking it on ourselves. I can live with a compromise. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic Hamrugu. We've come full circle, we're back at Mish Head. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. I'm quite certain he's going to scuff up the crime scene in some way. The woman's gaze follows Mejahed as he leaves. So, you guys are like cops or something? Have you ever thought that maybe things should go to shit? I'm Kathy, by the way. You hear that? That sound. He's breaking something. Yeah, Jean-Luc must be really tearing it up over there. I wish I could see it. Look at you! RCM Renter Cops! Guarding that bridge like Ebrot's lapdogs. Is this where it's at now? The RCM is for sale. And who are you? What is your business here? Why are your clothes four sizes too small for you? I am an unbelievably corrupt cop. I am corrupt every opportunity I get. A shrill mm. laughter interrupts you. Echoing across Martinez. It's Kuno. Then the man turns to look behind him at the behemoth appearing around the corner, approaching him, walking past him. So he just punched the tree over, right? The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. And what you had to do was to become a Union man for all to see. Let's get out of here. Let's go see what he did. Okay, he removed the, uh... You missed a good show before! A kid came by and completely fucked the tree to pieces! He fucked the tree up! You need to act decisively. It's Kuno. Use Kuno words. Uh. Stop choking, Kuno! The faggot has got you in a chokehold! <laughs> Kuno's not fucking choking! Like fuck you did! Kuno's gonna keep saying kip forever now. Kip, 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 <coughs> Shit. The fuck did you want anyway? You got your fuck bag down. Now let's talk normal shit. Yes, yes. Kuno wants a normal conversation. Ask normal shit, please. The fuck do you want with it? How's that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. <laughs> this is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Well played. <laughs> saw that coming. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Kuno doesn't fucking care. 
Okay. The corpse lies on the ground among the remains of an absolutely demolished pine wood branch. It's gently laid on one side. Mr. Measure had has done a good job. Nothing is too broken or compromised. The victim is ready for a field autopsy. A fucking field autopsy? Yes. One, investigation of the scene. Two, initial examination of the victim. Three, field autopsy. Four, transportation of the body to the morgue. We are on number three. Kim, you're going to kill me. The RCM's four-phase murder scene processing venue. The fuck are they on about? Cops gonna cut his shit up! Well, I'm not gonna look weak in front of Kuno. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. I thought we decided to leave it to processing. Let's not turn this into some kind of circus. Okay, so you can sneak out of your room, maybe, after he's gone asleep. Shoot, Looney Rooney. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. And <laughs> no, you don't. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. That's right. Stupid boy. No. You're not a Harry either. Wow, rude. You're a motherfucker. That's who you are. Rooney the motherfucker. Come back later, Corpo. Come on, officer. You know what a field of Dubsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the Dorman Shield volcano, Corpus Windy, is the world's highest summit. And the failure of the 30... You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. Who's the Copperpedia? I think I need to talk to him. You, sir. You are the Copperpedia. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. And hygienically? I suggest I handle the physical part of the autopsy and you take notes. That's right. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... That's you. The corpse is indifferent to your scribblings, just lies there. The next box says... KK57 dash I'm tempted to make a playthrough of Disco Elysium where I just save scum every single skill check until I get it first time. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals Precinct 57, followed by his date 0803 and time of arrival 0815 on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. Whatever. That's because he doesn't want to bring up the messy question of your initials. HDB? Mm. Yeah, that's the re only reason why he's filing it under himself is for that. And what would that make the alphanumeric? I do. KK57 <laughs> dash. I have been 0503 dash 0815. Next. NA. NA. Hmm. Roughly 50. Try 40. The damage is so extensive, it's better to err on the young side. I'm gonna go with the visual cameras. Mondial. Fair to olive skin from the Isola huh? of Windy. This is a so lighting just changed quite dramatically. You might as well say whitish. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. <laughs> fucky fucky! Male. <laughs> Pigs get up <laughs> Why? Why would you ever pick anything out? <laughs> Nor does he look male, with his pregnant belly 
and indistinguishable face. We're still going with March 4th, 51. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57 0503 0815. Listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. None. At least not after the initial examination. Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. These I did come to the conclusion he died in the treatment. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed behind Rosencrantz Row. Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, like drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Coudon, the day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches to make sure she is dead more than anything else. The building is tall. It's a bit hard to do commentary over this. In solitude. Most of the apartments are unoccupied. This was a suicide. The other, an accident. The small one. When it constantly throws me curveballs like this. And so, all across Jamrock. Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today, 42 stations of breath. We should start the postmodern. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy paper tries to answer why. External examination Close. summary. The deceased wears armored boots and white briefs. The make of the briefs is Babrodin, I think. The See, it's happening? Babrodin, yes. Inexpensive. Size M. Color white. The disappointment is palpable. The red haired thing was expecting something more. I know. The rest of the clothes have been removed post mortem by scavengers in order to get to the victim's ceramic armor. Officers are in search of the missing pieces. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. I think that you're right, Rama. The boot has a serial number. It's E50.100.100. The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alpha numerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a map of the night sky. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings, to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene, using a triggered mini. The deceit has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, Three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age 42. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature below freezing. Preservation is good. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back. His hair feels wet, soaked with rain, cold to touch. Not that different from a living person after a swim. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to your hand, like thread off a rag doll's head. Yeah, let's do the gross thing. More hair sticks to your hand. Hair off the rain-soaked head of a dead man. 
There are bumps and dips on the skull below. An alien landscape. God. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs. Consistent with stone strong post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity! You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? <laughs> velocity was fucking max! Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. I didn't... Apparently Kuno does read books. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest. Consistent with predation. You get your mark. The steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the bell so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Always good to think ahead. Now, we need to cut the bell to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head off. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like Please let me get changed. rising from the east. <laughs> you are? You're Kuno's pig? Ah, uh, frig, I'm trapped in this. You jam the cutters right under the knot. That seems like a smart idea. Yeah, somewhere there. Already, they're buried deep in the map. The lieutenant looks by, somewhat worried as you summon power words to your aim. <laughs> a really, really bad smell is coming from there now. And some kind of cracking sound. Told you my pig was hardcore. I should have a go first. I think I have a strategy. He sinks the cutters into the knot, preparing to perform the cuts with his elbow to his knee for precision. Snap. There the we go. Thank you, Cash. Another cut, and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. Here. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck, on the neck. Sorry, the suspension point is on the back of the neck? Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Chest is intact, normal contour, abdomen is protuberant, pelvis intact, genitalia... No! <laughs> it's get out of its sea! He knew it. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. <laughs> no evidence of injury. I'm not inspecting the fucking genitals. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. From wounds sustained over two, maybe more decades, Dispersal and accumulation indicates long and active combat duty. We know this. Mm -hmm. We have a real museum here. Battles, wars. Last item, hands. This flesh is cold, icy. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from and what's your name? I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Corbo. What can I do you for, Il Corbo de Cappadocia? It's good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo. I did. Reminded me of when I was just a small boy. Before this happened to my face and my body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this, I mean. I don't think it's going to happen. Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. 
Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. Ooh. That's all for the external. Well done. What next? Central nervous system. I have nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. The brain that is very vulnerable to compromises in its blood supply. I think that may well be the moral of every <laughs> story for <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Alright, uh, nay. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hiery bone. Let's see. With his eyes I'm gonna wrap up after this autopsy. The lieutenant it's puts his light, hand yeah. on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it. Gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips. Black and viscous. Yeah, jack that fucker off! Could you shut the fuck up, Kuno? The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Respiratory system. Back hunched as if in prayer, he begins to pry open the dead man's jaws. He stops to exert more force, both hands Oral used. cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat war. Mouth My heater is still running. Hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again, straight in that mouth of his. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach yeah. and into your mouth. Yeah. You're forced to swallow just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Hepatobiliary, N.A. Ah, are you a hepatobiliary expert? Neither am I. That's it. Same for toxicology and serology, N.A. Unless you have untapped reservoirs of knowledge there? Reservoirs? No. But do they take obscure trivia and odd tidbits? No. Like a toxicology screening? At this stage, I doubt processing will find anything. Even if it was cardiovascular, the body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Gastrointestinal. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. Write it down. Keep the voila. What's next on the list? Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fields. Leave a fourth one too. <laughs> what about the injuries we have inflicted? Head, chest and scalp bite mark injuries. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. And your opinion, officer? <laughs> non fail Agreed. Next injury? Oh, so we inflicted them? <laughs> okay, so there's a spin stabilized munition from a kill A919 as a loader lodged in his lung and an incision on the thorax from a chain cutter I wouldn't mention those better not to muddy the waters be pedantic if you like, it doesn't matter no one else is going to investigate this man's murder and if they do, such details would only confuse them see? these pigs are fucking corrupt why don't you fuck him if you love him so much? now, injuries so, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury, a stone. The injury did not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. At maximum velocity! 
has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Right. Next. A dark red abraded ligature mark. Every time the weather changes it with a gap blows me away. Measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical column intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of flowing on the neck. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's Sorry, I head zoned out for jerks a second there. to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. Yeah, that'd probably That's be it. a fatal injury. We have established cause of death. It's not much, and it leaves much to be questioned. But it's a start. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. Woo! Level up. Well, we established probable cause of death. Some would say that's the goal of an autopsy. We also requested a toxicological screening. That was thorough. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Fourborg for processing. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. Mm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. <clears throat> Perception. Do I have anything that improves perception? That would appear to be a negative. Well, let's the just roll it. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. You run your hands over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen orb, his fingernails have turned dark. Do you think we may- You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed in the flesh before you. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body. If you want for this task to slowly become impossible, then yes. Otherwise, it would have to be industrial in size. Let's start by asking Gart at the Whirling Rags and the Fritz store down at the gates. If they don't know, but only. Fuck are you looking at being old man? You want a piece of the Kuno? Wanna get fucked? Only if all else fails. Mm. Kuno looks like he gets around. Knows Martinez. And its fridges too, probably. Mm -hmm. This is one task we cannot sideline. With every hour, Whatever we are looking for will become harder to find. Okay, could I just look at the corpse the man immediately again? The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. God, the way that that is wobbling around as I walk is making me so nervous. It's just parallax, but... Oh. Okay, yeah. Locate a fridge for the corpse. Gap, have fun, baby. I help you? Yes, yes. For the correct it. I don't care. You're not putting a dead body into my fridge. This is a culinary establishment, not... It would only be... Lieutenant, you too? <laughs> you're asking too? No. The answer is no. I will not turn this place into some kind of macabre circus. Let's go talk to the Frit clerk. 
Okay. Sorry, I slapped the microphone. Hi, bestie. The man ponders his cooking utensil. The man keeps shaking his head. His eyes seem sad. Then he starts swiping crumbs off the countertop. I don't think he understands, officer. We need to find some other way to make ourselves clear. <laughs> the corpse in the fridge. Oh, oh, no, no. What do you know, fit fridge? Fridge more. <laughs> Where's the shot? Mm -hmm. I know. Okay, we have our answer. It won't fit. We need a bigger fridge. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. He looks up at you, then looks away. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. Okay. Dang it, I was planning to get the stop immediately after I finished that autopsy and then I was like, no, I need to fridge the body. As though time passes when I'm <sighs> not playing the game. Um, is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frick does. She looks up. Fine. Frick doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay? Mm-hmm. Right behind you. Um, you're joking, right? Um, okay. It wouldn't even fit, you know. Now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> maybe a glass door fridge in a public grocery store isn't the best option for storing a corpse. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad that Kim is on board with Operation. Store the damn corpse in a fridge. I'm unsurprised that it comes to Kuno in the end. I don't suppose I can get anything else from these, can I? The tracks are as they have ever been. A bit more worn, perhaps. Fortunately, the No, nothing. Okay, Kuno, where's the damn fridge at? This is gonna hurt. Fuck, does Kuno care? For the fuck him. Good thing you asked the Kunmeister. Kuno knows a fridge. Perfect for freezing. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Bacon man's in a rush. But what's in it for the Kuno? What's the return on Kuno's investment? Fingers crossed. Kuno's a poor kid from a poor neighborhood. Say your job is on the line. He'll simplify. Can't you see his hair is red? The color of social democracy? Not all of them. Social democrats have their hearts in the right place. The fuck are you doing? Don't pay attention to him. Just keep... Uh... <laughs> it's not that dramatic. Kuno's never seen anything so lame. Listen, pig. If you were Kuno, the fuck would you care? You just haven't done it long enough. You need to do it even longer. The Golden Mouth Man is a liar. He can't be trusted, sire. He only wants to humiliate you. No, it's the face block who's trying to humiliate you. Why does he speak like that? Why can't he speak like a normal person? See, sad shit? Kuno doesn't fucking care about this sad. Now, how about you at least? Why don't we go pester some other? Hmm, that's actually not such a bad idea. Kids do see stuff. Kuno 
Every time I interact with Kuno, I have to take magnesium because he just raises my blood pressure. Oh, I didn't even need to take that magnesium. I could have taken the hit. Ow. I get the impression that was telling us to go and talk to Kuno S. Although it might also be talking about. Nah. That was a hard negative. Well, there's one other kid that we know of. Where is the stand fridge? Hello again, sir. Are you interested? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer. A fridge? <laughs> you mean like the ice bear fridge? Man, that's scary. Ice bear fridge? Yes, like a bear, but white. There's a fridge below the building in the basement with red glowing eyes. I went back there once, behind the bookstore. Mum doesn't want me to go there anymore. Not that I want to. It was pretty scary. Pog. Yes. Well, it is pretty dark in there. I never finished my exploration. Anyway. Well, let's go locate that frick. Yes, Kuno is actually the worst, which is kind of impressive because he's a kid, so you'd think that he'd get some sympathy, but no, I just really I just really want to never talk to Kuno again. <laughs> oh, hi. I never finished my exploration back here, and now I'm suffering for it. I could have skipped this whole fridge search. Kim? It's dark, and the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Yes, you might even call it a feature of the universe that you need to hold tools to use them. I'm sorry, the fundamental laws of the universe don't seem to agree with you, detective. So, come on. What, Kim? It's dark, and the flashlight works a lot better if you hold Just absolutely yelling at me about the flashlight here. You done? Okay, that soundtrack's fucking creepy. John. Hey, why are there mannequins in here? Oh, thank gosh, it's just free money. Some kind of machine with a cube shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. But we are looking for a fridge and we are pressed for time, so. On the other hand, it's not the time not interested in abandoned radio computers. We'll be back. Where does this door go? Oh my gosh, where the frig am I? Oh Jesus Christ, that's the fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes 
a glowing red. Let's check that it's empty. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keep it yes, in the Yes, fridge door. magnets. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough to... Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we we'll manage. Okay, let's put the the uh, fresh corpse in the fridge with the glowing red eyes in the bottom of the built of the haunted building. The body is heavy and stinky. It takes half an hour to get to the base. Then ten more minutes to stand in the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. This is a good idea. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. <laughs> this is some of the best body's work I've ever done. Of course you don't. Look at that. What have we done? <laughs> we stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This does not be visual. <laughs> did we though? Okay, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under control circumstances. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Please give me the, f the friggin' perception roll. You touch the dead man's body. His skin is cold, light blue and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still... It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge or the decomposing body in it. Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. Somewhere in the past, it's summer. Five-year-old Fifet lets go of her mother's hand, change jingling in her pockets as she hops towards the ice cream stand right across the plaza. As she makes her way to the market stall, the girl starts crying. A ferocious ice bear is guarding the fridge, its paws raised to ward off any potential customers. Her mother rushes to soothe her, but Fifette doesn't want ice cream anymore. She just wants to go home. The ice bear stares at them as they leave the plaza. A gust of wind flies one of the wrappers right past the sobbing girl. I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The electricity bill must be catastrophic. On the other hand, it did help us with a certain corp situation. Well, okay, and this is where we're going to leave it for tonight. We have successfully put the corpse into the haunted, um, glowing red-eyed fridge that is shaped like a bear and is actually scaring the pants off me constantly. Thank you everyone for joining. The Discord is linked down below, the VODs channel is also linked down below. I continue to appreciate all of you. I need to sleep, it's like 2am on a work night. Good night. Thank you.